I love to see the times passing by and the ride is real beneath God's blue sky. Let me travel this land from the mountains to the sea, cause that's the life I bring. And when I'm gone and at my grave you stand, say God called home your rambling man. Welcome to Ramblin' Man Podcast, episode number 153. This one's with Dustin Camp, Chrissy Betts, and Lauren Corum of the Curious Table Podcast. Curious Table is a podcast produced by Knox Pride, and the three of them sit down with other people in the LGBTQ plus community. I think I'm leaving one out, but I'm going to go with that for right now. <laughs> uh, that they, they have a meal, and they have an open forum discussion with the people in attendance it's a great podcast you should subscribe now you can find it on your podcasting platform of choice but give them a follow on instagram and they have a link tree with all the applicable outbound links there their username is the curious table podcast like i say give them a follow subscribe and listen to their podcast and i appreciate them for being on Sponsor this week is Feral Giant. Feral Giant is a graphic design, illustration, and social media consultation company based here in Knoxville, Tennessee. Though they do work for clients big and small all over the country, all over the globe, in fact. But they also do photography, videography, video editing and audio editing, website design, SEO, writing, content development, Hell, they'll babysit your kids if it nets them money. So make sure you give them a follow on social media on either Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, or LinkedIn at at Feral Giant. And be sure to give them an email today and hire them for your next project. Without much further ado, here's the episode. First thing we'll start with is to say your names so they can differentiate the voices. Got you. So we'll start. Although this is hilarious. (laughs) (laughs) I'm Dustin. I'm Lauren. And I'm Chrissy. See, that's how it works. I, I thought about that earlier today. I was like, I need to have them talk. Because otherwise, it'll just be like, wait, which is which? Is which? which? Yeah. So, uh, where are you all originally from? We'll go the opposite way this time. I grew up in Little Rock, Arkansas. Okay. And I'm from Spartanburg, South Carolina. I am from Lake City, Rocky Top, Coe oh Creek, God. whatever you want to call it. <laughs> <laughs> Do you still call it Lake City? I do. <laughs> Is that what it was when you were there? At yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's been Rocky Top for ten years, maybe. Um, going on that. Yeah. Ten? Did you say ten? It was it's something like that. Yeah. yeah. Wow. It's been a minute. Yeah. It, it, the reason they changed this last time was this developer came in and was going to build an amusement park, but in order to do it, they had to change the name of the city to Rocky Top, and so the city went through all this legal process to get it changed because of you know the person who owns the right to the songs and all this and then yeah. the developer just vanished i love that amusement <laughs> park i go up there all the time wow <laughs> gorgeous. i was so my friend and i had these marketing meetings where we go and do coffee or donuts or wherever and we went up that route and there are some actual it's weird seeing how can i say this without being a dickhead <laughs> it's weird seeing those places develop to where there's like a boutique coffee shop there. Yeah. Because I'm from here. So mm-hmm. <laughs> it was like it's changed a little mm-hmm. bit. We actually found like four good coffee shops. Three good coffee shops. One of them. They microwaved the milk. And I was just like, whoa. Well, no. Yet, no. <laughs> no. That yeah, was no. across. Maybe I shouldn't say that on a recorded podcast. <laughs> I mean, I'll tell you. I don't know which one it <laughs> Do is. Do you know which one it is? I don't. Well, the only coffee shop I went to in that area was um, across from the courthouse. It was a coffee shop 
slash tattoo. So in the morning, his morning hours were a coffee shop, and then there was a tattoo shop attached to it. So at a certain point, it turned into. I wonder if it's sent to, there's a guy who did that in Clinton. Yeah, well, yeah, that's the one. Oh, okay. And that, that's the one. <laughs> I never went to a coffee shop in Lake City or Rocky Top. I don't know if I would. Yeah, now I'm trying to remember which one it was. I've never been there ever. I don't Have even you? know. No. I only know adjacent because you talk about Yeah, it. and I remember I was living here in Knoxville when the Rocky Top name and I just remember all the legal stuff they had to go through, but I had no idea about the amusement it's, park or any yep. of that. 75. Yeah. George, Kentucky. Okay. Mm-hmm. That's how, when I first started driving, that's how I knew how to get home. I just, my parents always told me, follow those Kentucky signs. Okay. Okay. And then, you know, from, from Lake City to Knoxville, it was a big change for a little small town boy. Country boy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> was that the one that had the big uh, dragon? Uh, that's the next exit up. Okay. Um, the Campbell County exit. Oh, Campbell we, County. We won't go there. <laughs> <laughs> I know some from what? from growing up playing sports. I'm pointing at you because I know your son plays baseball. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We would have so to you go went up these that way. weird counties. I, I feel like where... Justin, my husband, has yeah. said the same thing. Yeah. That he played all these random well, little the cities and stuff is around. Well, the difference is I went to Fulton. So we would have these words yelled at us when we were there. Oh. Yeah. And we yeah. had parents mm-hmm. chasing us in, wasn't Science Hill, but it was one of those random outbound counties to where it was just like, oh, the parents were calling the black kids the N-word oh, and calling that's the awful. white kids in lovers. <gasps> yeah. And we were like 13 and 14 years old. Wow. Like, you should be ashamed. Yeah, that's that, ridiculous. That is ridiculous. There's no wonder I wanted to get out of that place as fast as I could. Yes. Good old. To the city you went. Yes. <laughs> Progressive Knoxville. It was uh, mm. horrible. <laughs> now, now, it, so what point did, did you only move to Knoxville or did you, were there places no, in between? No, I left to go to school in Nashville. Um, and was there for two years and then, um, moved back home because I didn't like the, I, at that point I was going at my school career was to go to seminary. And so I went to a very religious school. Okay. Um, and then, um, at a certain point I was like, mm, this is not for me. Um, and so I went back home. I got a, a great job opportunity. So I was like, I'm going to take this. So, but, so I worked full time. I actually worked full two full time jobs and then went to school taking 18 hours to get my um, degree Where? in business management. So, um, where'd you go in Nashville? Um, Lipscomb That's University. Dino's dad went there for a little bit too. He yeah. didn't graduate from there. But, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> when you said very religious, I was like, I think that might, that might track. Yeah. Is that, that's not the Bill Billy Graham school. No. Um, this one, it's a... Liberty. That one's Liberty. Liberty, yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, this one has K... Th- it's It's got kindergarten through high school on campus, and then the colleges on campus as well. Uh-huh. Um, and so I w- was there on a scholarship. Um, they think very highly of themselves, money-wise. Um, and... Um, so there's two reasons I left. One, I lost my scholarship because it was a need-based scholarship, and they said I was too rich to afford eighteen thousand a semester. Um, oh. And then um, the kid across the hall from me, um, they found out that he was gay, and they threw him out within the end of the day um, with nowhere to go. Um, cool. And so like cool I, yeah, I was like, You're one, like, I don't want to be a part of that. And two, that was when I was dealing with my whole coming out and stuff. And so it made me very scared. And then, so I was like, I don't know what I'm going to do. And then that's that same week I got called into the registrar's office and they were like, Hey, you know, at the end of the semester, your scholarship's going to be up. This is why. 
I was like, okay, well. Yeah, that's my sign. Yeah. <laughs> see you later. Okay. Never. You can't see fire you me, I quit. quit. Yeah. You can't yeah. fire me, I quit. <laughs> oh my God. Okay. Uh, oh, wow, Dustin, I didn't know that. <laughs> where, where, where did you, you're from South Carolina. Mm-hmm. There's some synapses. Still I going. went to. What? Records fall. It's fine. I know. Fine. Jody's house is like a record museum. <laughs> um, I went to the University of South Carolina, graduated in 2004. I have a degree in media arts, which is okay. funny because I'm, I've never done anything with it. But full circle, here I am back with, you know, media. Um, but before I graduated, I got a job as a flight attendant. And so that was what I had lined up for myself uh, right after school. And I was based here in Knoxville, which is it was it wasn't my first choice i wanted to be in charlotte but charlotte was um full at the time and everything was based on seniority so i was at the bottom of the totem pole so i had to wait and when i after settling in here for a little while i was like oh you know what i don't want to go to charlotte i'm just gonna stay here in knoxville and i've been here ever since Charlotte, the the cleanest downtown I've ever seen in my life. I like Charlotte. I have family yeah. that lives there now, and I enjoy going there to visit. But, you know, I just fell in love with Knoxville. Oddly enough, I've got, there's a couple that I'm friends with that they are a, I, I, I try to get all the terms right because I know what I look like. <laughs> uh, I think they call themselves a lesbian couple, not queer. They say lesbian. And... They moved to Charlotte for work, and they said they were not welcome, oh, really? which kind of surprised me because I thought, well, Charlotte's a bigger yeah. city. They felt not welcome because but of But isn't it, I think it's like an insurance or banking town. Banking. It's a very it's big banking. banking town. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So I guess I can see it being, but they moved back here. I was like, really? <laughs> so that is, how long mm-hmm. ago was that? Do you know? So, six years. Oh. Oh, wow. Seven years somewhere. That's interesting. It's weird because I always think pandemic is like three and a half years. I know. So I'm like, yeah. Okay, no, it was way. It was before that. Well, so. Charlotte is the reason that North Carolina is blue, right? I, I thought so, but I also think that there's but a lot of college, probably, t- like um, yeah, that's Raleigh true. and yeah, Winston that's Salem, true. and I mean, of course, you have Asheville, which is yeah. like liberal, Super, yeah, big time may, liberal pocket. If you don't oh. mind, yeah, yeah. There, <laughs> hey. <laughs> Oh, no. a, need a, there you, you need go. Help. No, tighten. Oh, oh. Gotcha. loose and then tight, and all this will stay in because I don't there edit. Well, I edit if I need to. <laughs> that's fine. Uh, flight attendant. Yeah, that was fun. What led you to that? Um, I really wanted to travel, and I wasn't one of these kids that had the ability to take like a gap year between college and real life, and I didn't have any money, so. Me and a friend of mine decided that we were going to, we we saw an ad for it okay. and it was a mass um, interview process. Like there were like hundreds of us and we went to Atlanta and went into this big banquet hall in a hotel and they basically like narrowed us down to like eight as the day went on. Holy crap. And we had to stand up there and read, you know, some of the, you know. The oxygen mask. Yeah. They gave us, like, they gave us some, you know, they gave us what to read. It wasn't like we had to memorize it and read it right then and there. But we had to stand up in front of And I, like, public speaking, like, my phobia. If I don't know if there's a phobia. What What's the name? What do you call that when you have a fear of public speaking? Is there a name for that? Oh, uh, shit your pants. Yeah. A fear of public speaking. Forget what you're doing, like <laughs> black out while you're standing up in front of people. I mean, because that's the way I always was in, in college and stuff. Like I'd have to give a report in front of my lecture hall class. And I swear I'd sit back down and be like, I hope that was okay. I don't even know what I said. And so when I did the flying and I flew on little airplanes, they were 50 yeah. seaters. And so I was the only flight attendant on there. So I did all the announcements. I dealt with all the passengers, every question, every concern. But it was almost like immersion therapy, you know, like you're scared of water. Just go jump in the water. I was scared of speaking like that. And I just threw myself into it. And it changed me in, Mm -hmm. I mean, 
for the better. Like I still have a little fear of it when I'm, when I really start thinking about it, but it helped me get over that very much. Okay. So we were like, why don't you come do a podcast? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We're going to record <laughs> yeah. and you have to perform. Yeah. yeah. That's great. Yeah. So this is a new, mm-hmm. this is new, mm-hmm. but fine. Good. And I'm going to segue a little bit for a second. Do y'all know about Pachaka Cha? Yeah, we've we're, we're just been talking about yeah. that. It's okay. tomorrow night, too, isn't there it's one tomorrow, tomorrow night? night. Yeah. 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 Okay. We're, we're in the process of... Okay, you should do it. Yeah. I've that done it three cool. times. And you, you have. Here's... I hate talking in front of people, but mm-hmm. I would just listen to Kanye, which can't do that anymore, but all of that confidence <laughs> would just leach into my brain. I'm like, all right, all right, I'm going to do this. <laughs> like, get some, you know, get up there and do it. And, Spoke on the Bijou Theater stage, and my first slide was, what the fuck am I doing here? Why am I here? John Paul Jones was standing where I'm standing, and I'm a dumbass. Like, And it just, it's only six and a half minutes. It's only six and a half minutes. Six and a half is more. I feel like you said three. I I thought it was three. But I feel like I'd be better if I was with you 20 slides, 20 seconds a slide. It's right at six and a half minutes. Maybe that's where I was. Are they all pertaining to whatever you want them to be about? Oh. Like literally, I, I think I've we been need to going go. since they started at Relics. Okay. And <laughs> what is it? Beauvais. Beauvais Lyons, who's the printmaking instructor yeah, yeah. at UT. He got up there and talked about boobs for for. Uh, yeah, they they six people and a half talk minutes. about the most random. Knox Pride did one, but I went. Um, Bonnie did one when mm-hmm. after she um, oh. launched her business, and I went and there was a gentleman that talked about telling the difference between a um, faux Beatles record and a real Beatles record. Um, there was a guy that talked about his um, goat business for um, like he goes and set, sets up fencing and then releases like 200 goats and they eat you know, wildlife to clear out property. Like it was. Yeah. And then it, so one time. It's kind of run by architect, the kind of architects around town, but mm-hmm. that was kind of early. I looked up cause I still have my two slides. One of them was called perseverance through failure. And the other one was, I don't know. I can't remember what it was titled. I just know the first slide said, you are not a beautiful or unique snowflake. <laughs> <laughs> I love so it. Mine were very happy. Okay. I, I'm, I'm working on Do one you of, have to apply? Yeah. You do. Okay. Yeah. But I've, I've messaged you'll, Bonnie. You'll, you'll, get, you'll get in there. You're good. You're good. Trust me. You'll get in okay. there. Okay. <laughs> I'm working on one right now called Circles. Why did I think it was three minutes and 20 seconds? I don't know. I know, but James said he would write a script out for us. So. Yeah. It's It's great. It's great. We I, can do it. We I, can, would, I should do I it for it when I went, I, there, too. When I went yeah, you to see should. Bonnie, I wasn't mm-hmm. exactly sure what it was, because it was described to me as like a, a TED Talk in yeah. Knoxville, and mm-hmm. I really enjoyed it. Yeah. It was very informative, and like I is said, it always a wide at the same variety place? of... It is she now. She story okay. did it, didn't she? It's yeah, at, story yeah. did one, too. It's at the mill of mine. mine. Yeah. yeah. Okay, okay. Well, last time, my friend Jasmine, who does portraiture, she gave one on leaving a legacy for your kids because she is a black woman she was like a lot of she was like here's a photo of my great great grandmother and she looked beaten down because mm. she was a slave and she was like that's why i make these beautiful portraits so that these the people i'm photographing their grandkids can see their beauty and their their soul and their grace oh and I it's like awesome. it. it's awesome it, yeah uh, there was a photographer the night that I went and hers was a focus on queer Appalachia. And so it oh, was yeah. I remember that. portraits of queer people up in the Appalachian mountains that you wouldn't normally get to see or, or, or know That's about. Cool. Like she goes into these small towns and takes these photos of these queer couples. Okay. I have so many ideas. Yeah. Okay. So the, the first time I gave one, I was leaving one job. It was my last day at work, and I had half a day. And so I came here and took a nap on that very couch. And I watched this comedian special, Tom Segura. And he talked in the front part of, on the front part of the uh, special about people asking him, like, if you have a bad set, did you have a bad day? He was like, no, I'm out here for an hour. This is an hour out of 20, out of 24. The other 23 hours were fantastic. Yeah. Mm-hmm. This one hour sucked, but it's only that little part of the day. And 
thank God I heard that because I was like, oh, if I suck and bomb, it's six and a half minutes. Yeah. Who, who cares? Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's very so. true. But I also, it, I have the same mentality when we teach Burlesque Academy. The first thing we tell people is these people are here to love you or because they love you. When you are a part of this, the, those people are there for one reason only to support you to be a champion for you to be a cheerleader and so um i you could it was funny to watch some people get up there and you could tell they were nervous and as soon as they got up there and people like you could feel the energy Energy. shift to them and like these people are like oh we're here for you you know Mm -hmm. we we just want to learn about what who you are and what you do and that's it and Mm -hmm. you could just see like everything it just shed off of people no i love that well it's also not a it's not a contest. No. Like you're getting up there to share. Oh no, I'm gonna get as many damn laughs as like <laughs> I did. But I, I mean, I that did, puts the me first more one I ease. did. The person who followed me sucked. They were just so flat and boring, and I tried to make people laugh because I watch a lot of comedy, and yeah. I'm just like, this was I got your people in- interested. They just don't want to hear a morose story. They want to hear a good story and make the people laugh of mm-hmm. every few. So when I ended, I actually joked that I should grab the mic and slammed it. And I was like, oh, shit, there's somebody <laughs> after me. And she got there, and she was so boring. And it was just like, I'm just standing in the corner trying to do breathing to calm down. And, and I was like, oh, I, I won. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I come from sports. I won, damn it. I know. Uh, I was just going to go into this whole thing of like nobody's there to judge you because it's not a contest. No, and then Jetty's like, that girl was so boring. <laughs> she was boring. Judge much. I don't know who does their graphics um, for their posters and stuff, but they're always gorgeous. Yeah. Oh, thank you. They I've are. Done oh, oh, have, have you? you? <laughs> okay. Yeah. I've done, the last one I did, because I just use it as an excuse to do something weird. Mm hmm. And the main guy, Matthew, he was like, so what did this mean? I was like, it, it meant it was done. I was like, I don't know. I just kept building all these layers <laughs> until it was done. And he was like, but doesn't it have a deal? I was like, no. It's not did done. you do the one with the octopus? No. Uh, let's see. I like that one a lot. Well, then, yeah. Of course. Okay. <laughs> yes, that one. That one. <laughs> and what does that mean? What does Pachaka John mean? Doesn't it mean like a little bit of that, a little bit? A little bit sure. of this, a little bit of that or something. Sure. How do you spell it? Yeah. It's, I don't know. I don't even know. P. I'm There's some K's it. and some U's. How many I can tell, yeah. Here is, it's this is the last one I did that he wanted me oh. to explain what the hell that was. I was like, I don't know. I just, I always wanted to, I've done this oh, twice some. now where I find like a, uh, uh, creative commons art like historic art and then just keep building and building and building until i'm done so it has no deeper meaning I can't find it. it's a type of storytelling how do you spell it p-e-c-h yep there you go P-E-C-H. that's how i remember it pechacucha a k u c h a i always call it pikachu pikachu <laughs> and it translates to mean the sound of conversation or chit chat in Japanese. That's cool. I like that. Okay. It's you can go into your thing about competition. Every time I go, it's like there are a third of them that stick with me. Yeah. There are a third of them that I was like, that's interesting. And then there's always a third of them like, why did they bother? Well, I mean, but that's just, yeah. d- that's your taste. That's good numbers. You know, I mean, like that's some people, numbers, yeah. But, yeah, but some people might go in there and be like, wow, that was a fascinating story about, yeah. right, you know. Some one tiles. dude just got up there and showed selfies of him traveling across the world because he had a lot of money. I was like, cool, cool. About how many presenters are there usually? I think there's six. Uh, it's or usually is ten. More? Is it ten? It's usually don't ask me anything about this. I don't know. I just three minutes. Ten, it's usually nine five. to ten. It's usually like three, four, three, or oh, three, three, right. three. Yes, I <laughs> well, the I weird part. The, 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 the weird part is the last couple I've went to, the minute the person they know finished presenting, people leave. Oh, and by the end it was like, man, there's like a fifth of the people. This sucks. I uh, yeah. For those yeah, last people, I think like, that's sort yeah. of. So, we want to go first. Yes. You want to go in the first block. Yeah. Or we go last and we just tell 
all of our many, many friends to come and stay. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't think about that. I should tell Matt. I was like, yeah. get the bigger names. Or tell him to tell end. people, like, as a courtesy, stay to the stay end. Stay to the end. Yeah. They make you do that at children's dance recitals and stuff. They can do, these adults can do this. I've gone to enough uh, local sh- band shows to where it's been me and two other people at the end. And I was like, oh, this last band helped the first two bands load in and they just screwed off oh. by the end. So, I don't like that. Yeah. What else are you going to do? Matthew is the head of the whole thing. Matthew, I don't know how to pronounce his last name. Debartable. Debartable. Yeah. yeah. I know him a little bit. Yeah. Okay. South Carolina. (laughs) Chrissy. Crap, I've gone off too many. Arkansas. Arkansas. Little Rock. I went to Central High. Oh, really? Mm Mm-hmm. Anytime I hear Little Rock, my friends had an Airstream, Mm -hmm. went across the country, and they said the two places they saw the best art communities were just outside Dallas and just outside of Little Rock. Mm-hmm. And mm, probably 10 years ago. But oh, okay. they were like, so anytime I think of Little Rock, it's like, oh, they have a good art scene. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I've been to Bald Knob. Okay. I can never remember the name of the other little town that had a radio station that a friend of mine was a radio DJ. And this little town square is like an hour north of Little Rock. I'm terrible. Oh, okay. All the things. I moved my senior year in high okay. school. So, um, or, well, that's not true. I moved my junior year in high school and then moved back. Um, my parents, my dad got a job in Atlanta. We moved to Atlanta. I hated okay. it. So I moved back and lived with my best friend's family my senior year and went to Central my okay. senior year. So, Did you go off to college somewhere else? Or no, did you I did not. There? I ended up taking a year off after um, high school and... Oh, you were the one Lauren was talking about. And my friend... <laughs> uh, no, I didn't travel anywhere. It wasn't that exciting. Um, Sorry, that's my whole job here is to antagonize. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, my stepmom worked in the investment industry and okay. she worked... She was a bond trader um, in Atlanta and so... In my gap year that I was going to take off, because I had moved around, I was short a credit that I needed to, anyway, yeah. just long story. So I took a job working for an investment firm there, and basically when I said I was ready to go back to school, my boss was like, why? I can teach you everything you need to know. Oh. Like, you don't need a degree to be in this field. And so I was stayed for a couple of years and then was like, I don't think I want to do this for the rest of my don't life. Don't stay in Little Rock? Yeah. No, this was in Atlanta. Oh, this, this was, was in Atlanta. Atlanta. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, and then I went and nannied for uh, one of the bond traders for a year and started cooking for them and then decided that I wanted to go to culinary school. And so okay. then I went to go to culinary school and follow a boy to Portland, Oregon and ended up oh, finding goodness. somebody out there that was like, don't go to school. I'll teach you everything you know. It's a common theme in my life. <laughs> and it really is. There's nothing wrong with no, taking a and gap year. No. Yeah. Especially no, when I you want. have these little, the, the smarts that you do, Chrissy, and then you yes. have all these lovely people who are like, you don't yeah, need, to, need go to, to go to school. Yeah, don't need to go to school. Exactly. So oh, no, I have, I'm, I've got street smart, smarts and spades. Yes, you do. Yeah. There's so many, one of the many things I do is web design, and there are so many 13-year-olds that are better at coding. Mm-hmm than somebody who went to school for it or right. whatever. Yeah. Like, no. Whatever you got to do to... Just do. Yeah. I, yeah. As I said earlier, I have yeah. a degree that I have never done a thing with. Mm-hmm. I learned to follow my gut and to go yeah. do things yeah. that I love. So that's basically what oh, I've been doing so. is just chasing yeah. the things that make me happy. You're real good at For that. the last... Did you have a focus mm-hmm. in the culinary school? No, I didn't go to culinary school. So I ended up working... Or a thought. Yeah. I'm sorry, a thought. Like um, no, baking I think, or... No, well, no, not really. Okay. <laughs> that's the funny thing is that I'm in baking now but that was never my focus um the lady that I worked for out there had a catering business in the basement of her house she lived on like a her house was like zoned half commercial half residential so she had a catering business in the basement and I worked for her and she pretty much taught me everything that I knew and then I went and started my own I'm just like a serial entrepreneur I've literally had (laughs) <laughs> all the jobs <laughs> but little rock to atlanta to pacific northwest mm-hmm. that's quite the culture shock yeah yeah pacific northwest was not 
for me. I loved it, but I never really found my people. Like I just never f- felt like I completely like clicked in there. Yeah. So um, when I had the opportunity to come home, I did like just flannel. because I didn't ever think that I identified with the South. Like I never felt yeah. like I'm a Southern girl, but I missed I, I missed the South when once yeah. I got out there. There's definitely like a coldness that the rest of the world has that the South. Um, it's all fake. I mean, <laughs> we just all say darling and honey and make you think that we're it, love that, you. And then we talk shit behind you. <laughs> that meme that it's like people sure. of the North are very nice, but act mean people in the South act nice, but are actually, actually mean. mean yeah. snakes. Yeah. 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 It's pretty legit. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> yeah. Damn delight. I don't yeah. Know. A damn delight. Me too. Me too. Same. Well, I don't know shirt. I'm a damn delight. I'm a damn delight. Oh my God. <laughs> merch. We're going to make merch. Yeah, I like here. that a lot. Uh, actually, we'll start back here. Okay. You said your mom worked in fin- finance investment. My stepmom, yeah. Stepmom. What did your dad do? Um, so in Little Rock, my family owned a carpet store. Um, okay. And... Yeah, we owned Did a, everybody kind of get into the family business. No, my dad was the last one. Okay. He he kept it going for <laughs> a long. He really tried to salvage. I mean, it got, got to the point where it was like the way that my family had, you know, the way that carpets. I mean, it was it was all it's all boring. Okay. But he got into like custom area rugs for designers and doing that kind of stuff. He did the carpet for the Clintons in the white house when they were there. It's pretty exciting stuff. (laughs) Didn't know that. Me neither, Chrissy. Yeah. We're here to I'm, I'm here to pit y'all against one another and have y'all figure <laughs> Daddy out. Daddy didn't learn. Daddy didn't we vote for Clinton. <laughs> he, he, was, he, he wasn't too carpet. proud to go get that carpet. That's, That's another right. merch idea. <laughs> Daddy scary. didn't vote for Clinton. <laughs> <laughs> it's got to be yeah. on the shirt or bumper yeah. stuff. <laughs> yeah. uh, what did your folks do? Uh, my dad's a graphic designer, really? uh, photographer, painter, all all the arts. I don't know this. I don't know. I don't know. I, but yeah, he so, he's very. My, my dad's really talented. Um, and so he mom, was back in the day of like manually. Oh yeah. I mean, out. we had yeah. a dark room in my basement growing up, and That's, my sister and I used to always go in there and turn the red light on and like try to freak each other out, telling <laughs> each other terrible, scary stories and stuff. <laughs> anyway, um, and then my mom was an elementary school teacher for. Okay. Like 30 years or something. Okay. Both things I have dabbled in myself. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I'm going to go backwards for a second because I didn't ask my normal question. I'm, I'm also not used to interviewing this many people at once. Okay. So I'm, <laughs> <laughs> uh, did your folks have an idea of what you should do or did they pressure you to get into anything? Oh, Lord, no. No. Okay. No. No. My daddy just made sure we were working by the time we were old enough to get where we needed to get. He no. wasn't concerned about how we did in school or okay. anything like that. It was just like, like, it's the reason I'm scrappy like I am. Like, just okay. just get out there and go do some life and the world will teach you all the things that you need to know. Mm-hmm. And um, my sister was very much like, went to college, went through Rush, and they did all of that with her. And then when it came to me, they were like, oh, honey, I don't think that's for you. <laughs> I was like, cool kind of like hurt my feelings one. a little bit, but also they were right. I mean, yeah. it would not have, been, I would have been like, screw this. Yeah. Like I wouldn't have um, conformed to four years of doing what somebody told no me. Rush. So, no. no, no rush. No, <laughs> not for me. <laughs> <laughs> oh God. I can't imagine. Oh God. And you did your folks, when you decided to jump off and be a, uh, flight attendant were they like oh god what are you doing or it was just a job no they were really supportive of that yeah. I mean my dad was a little bit nervous just because I mean that that was kind of a common question when I would tell people that's what I was doing like are you not scared and you know it was post 9-11 2004 was when I was there so it wasn't too far post yeah. 9-11 so a lot of people thought that that was a fear you know that there was going to be a terrorist another terrorist attack or something and then other people who just have genuine fears of flying couldn't believe I was going to go do something like that but my parents other than my dad just being you know 
kind of a protective dad. He was super supportive of me going. I mean, he really, he also, before, when I graduated high school and knew I was going to head off to college, he did want me to get into the arts just because that was something that I had always shown an interest in and been a creative person. So he didn't want me to like waste that talent, I guess. But now as I'm older. I got to do this. Yeah. Every um, time. (laughs) <laughs> yes yes the exits are on either side of the aircraft do you imagine her in that little outfit <clears throat> uh-huh. Uh-huh. oh i was so cute i was so cute do you mouth the words when they start talking to no, you no you know what i've thought about like i don't even remember them and when i did this they didn't even have the recording the automated recordings oh, yeah. in the plane so i was up there saying the whole spiel and i mean <clears throat> it's a wonder to me that i don't remember all the things i still remember all the airport codes and things like that but mm, i'm i'm certainly that's charlotte tys those are the only two i can pull i mean that was part of the training before i even went like we spent a month training prior to actually getting into the airplane and doing the thing yeah and part of the training was learning all the airport codes in the parts of the aircraft. I'm trying to remember some of the other. I think we had to come in to the training with some of the various speeches already memorized. And we had to do those like right off the bat, which back to my fear, my heart starts like pounding just thinking about how nervous Everybody I Everybody looking at you and go, and go. <sighs> but I... Again, like I said, I like sucked it up and did it and changed. Can you tell me where the phalanges are on an airplane? The phalanges. (laughs) Do you ever see that Friends episode? No. No. (laughs) I guess it was maybe the last one. She was trying to get off the plane to go back to Ross and she... um, (laughs) Just made up a, a saying the phalanges on the plane and I was like in that, <laughs> is this a real thing <laughs> yeah I'm like in that the little thing that hangs in the back of the <laughs> it's not I just that's where my brain went I always think three amigos have y'all seen three amigos mm-hmm. uh, there's a little point where there's a plane flying over and he's like oh look it's a mail plane it's like how can you tell it's a mail plane little balls like <laughs> what a stupid joke but it makes me laugh every time i love it and what did your folks do for a living um well my mom didn't work until i was in high school she was the caregiver for my grandmother and then she went into restaurant management my stepdad was a construction worker my dad was a engineer Mechanical engineer. I was. I couldn't think of the word mechanical. <laughs> yeah. Um, he worked on the big drills that would drill under cities. So he okay. um, was the head mechanic on these ten-story drills that would drill Jeez. like subway channels or sewage channels under under big cities. Um, and so that's what he did up until last year when he retired. Oh. When. You- you told them you were going to school for seminary. Were they mind blown? Because it's all, it's so different from what no, they did. No, uh, because I, my family wasn't religious, but I grew up in church, yeah. um, going to church. I worked for the church, um, or I interned, and then I became an employee of the church. And so it was just, it seemed like it was what I was supposed to do um, and until I got into it. And then seeing the backside of religious places um i was like "Mm, this is this is not yeah this is not what i'm supposed to do um and so i I left (laughs) i think that was a good call i do too i um i worked for a what would be considered a a mega church in my town it was you know the the rich church and um i um when I interviewed for the position I was in, I was asked for my five-year plan. And I was right on target with my five-year plan two years in. And the major financial backers of the church didn't like that because 
they weren't getting the recognition, the church wasn't getting the recognition that the youth program was. So I was asked to um, essentially be a glorified babysitter so the adults could do what the adults do. Um, and I said that wasn't what I was called to do at that time. And if that's what they wanted, then I wasn't the right person. Um, and so they agreed for me to turn in my resignation. And I stood up in front of the church the following Sunday, said I was resigning and left and never heard from anyone since. And that was shocker. Four, yeah. <laughs> probably 20 years ago. So it's been, yeah. Mm -hmm. So did that make you sad at the time? No, because I got a, a crash course and fake people, yeah. I guess, mm -hmm. uh, learning how to tell who was really in your corner, who wasn't. Yeah. Um, Cause when push came to shove, the people that I thought I had my back definitely didn't have my back. Um, and I guess the spirit in me said, no, oh, you're okay. And so when I walked out that day, I was in full peace. Mm -hmm. Um, and it didn't bother me one bit that no one from that time yeah. ever, ever spoke out. It's when I was young, my uncle, I, hell, I was five or six where my uncle was telling me that he was leaving his church and some of them were going to form another church. And it was like, why, why are you doing that? It's like, well, we don't get along. It's like. Don't y'all believe in Jesus? Like, what are you? What are you talking about? You don't get along. Isn't that like, all you need? Like, what the hell? <laughs> yeah, well, in Lake City, you could stand on the porch of one church and throw a rock and, and literally hit another. That's it. Every block there was a, a church and um, of every <laughs> denomination, and you you would would think you were in World War Three sometimes just because of. Hmm. You know, this person was doing this, this pastor was doing this, well, they're doing this, well, they did this first, and that, and it was just, you know, I, I got to see the really dark side of religion that people don't. Yeah. That churches are really good at, at hiding. Mm -hmm. The church my grandmother took me to, you had to dress nice. Mm -hmm. And I was like, it, when I got older, it's like, oh, that's keeping certain people out. Mm -hmm. what that's doing. Yeah. And I, the whole time I was like, I'm uncomfortable. I wear shorts. I don't like this shit. I have to wear pants. Sitting there eating Tic Tacs, like bored out of my damn mind in this big, nice church. But Okay. Uh, I'll actually start over here. This is so weird pointing because it's... <laughs> uh, were you into performing as a kid? I, I was in chorus and theater as a kid, but um, like I didn't considered myself a performer then okay but also i lived in a small town i was trying to hide that i was the queer kid so if i did too much of that then that brought attention to to myself and so i wasn't about that then um it wasn't until later in life when i really connected with the performer side of myself okay he's a damn good performer Make sure we caught that. Yes. <laughs> I have like, to crank that up. That yeah. <laughs> you said you didn't like no. talking no. from people. So. Lord, no. I was the kid over here watching the performers. Okay. Like, I'm, I'm the observer. And, yeah, no, definitely not. Not a performer in the slightest. Reading books over in the corner, drawing a picture in the corner. Don't mind me. <laughs> I'll just be over here by myself. Yep. Leave me the hell alone. Yep, yep. Mm -hmm. <laughs> No, I no. wasn't either. Mm -mm. No. Mm -mm. Okay. So, I will get we'll get there in a second. Uh, <laughs> I was going to say, well, and spoiler alert: the three of you do a podcast together. We did. So we know that was uh, something you had to get over, maybe from the flight attendant part. So when it came to the podcast, were you like, "I'm good," or were you like, "Oh, oh shit. no," there was nerves. Um. Okay. I have like worked myself up to being a, more of an extroverted person. And then I think COVID like set me back, like kind of put me back into my like introverted yeah. roots. And uh, I'm kind of having to practice and remember how to be. But I also taught preschool for <clears throat> like 10 years after flying. Mm -hmm. And that is very performative. 
and you don't say <laughs> I, that taught me also a lot of how to like you know do the dog and pony show with the kids so you know but yes when we were when i was the the podcast thing was like i was like okay this is out of my comfort zone but yeah i'm gonna do it if it makes you feel any better i start this i still hate the sound of my voice yeah, that's so, a that's a hard that's a hard one. I thought you were saying, yeah, of course, your voice sounds like shit. <laughs> no. I'm just kidding. No. But it, that was something to really get. I was like, but yeah, I wanted to interview friends of mine who were doing cool shit. Yeah. So it's like that's the only way I can get past. Yeah, it. I can talk to a wall. So that's the other thing. That's cool. I, I sat at the show last night, and there's a couple sitting next to me. And at one point, he just looked over and he was like, "Is this your first show?" I was like, "Oh, you just unlocked." You don't realize how much I'm going to be talking to you now, brother. <laughs> <laughs> I found out their whole story, and then the lady behind me cried the entire show. And she was like, is it okay? That I was like, yeah, I don't give a shit. Do you. Keep crying. Keep crying. Do you need a handkerchief? I got you. I got you. I got you. Uh, now how about you? Like, were you a very extroverty person, or what? did it take a little bit for you to get used to doing No, I think I've always been comfortable talking to people and okay people. i, I kind of need <laughs> i kind of need my um the irony <laughs> I, know, I know um i always kind of need my i'm like an, an introverted extrovert yeah. like i i need to recharge but yeah. i can do i can yeah. tap dance you need when, to be done peopling for a minute yeah yeah yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> it drains me but i know how to do it yeah. so yeah yeah okay mm-hmm. and was there a turning point for you where you felt more comfortable or had you always felt comfortable performing no i could because i um i also hate the sound of my voice in my head i have this very deep masculine voice because i have this this image of myself and then when i hear myself i'm like oh that's not that's not what I, it's going on up in here um so doing the podcast that was my biggest um setback or, or hurdle to get over was being able to listen to playbacks or listen to the, the finished episodes and actually hear myself because of my other performances I don't talk I just, mm-hmm. <laughs> I just move and take clothes off so I, that I'm okay with that <laughs> I never want to get to what you do so that everybody at home's like what the fuck is going on <laughs> <laughs> that would be the best. Like, you didn't ask a key question in there <laughs> but speaking in front of people doesn't bother me yeah. like i can get up and, and i i'm very charming because i had to learn to be that way as a kid because mm-hmm. i had to charm charm myself out of situations or these queer mannerisms and things i did i could lean towards oh i'm you know i'm just that southern charming boy who you know yeah um is the the friend to the ladies and takes care of the ladies and uh it, that kind of thing and so i learned how to be charming in a room so that um i'm beating everyone else to the to the punchline of me being a a fat queer yeah essentially so so speaking in front of people was never an issue um, it's just when I had to hear myself speak back, then that's that was the issue. You need to give your little <laughs> self a hug. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, so one big aspect. So you all have been doing the podcast for for a minute at this point since February. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So have you found? No. <laughs> <laughs> like you ask an array of people. But have you found some people kind of clam up or some people like Jocelyn is a great example. If Jocelyn is never afraid to talk. No, no. I, been, and I don't say that in a negative way. No. It's just very. She's she's an entertainer. Yeah. As well. We, we try to balance mm-hmm. our dinner guests so yeah. that there isn't that. Now, there are times where we think a particular person is going to talk more than they do. Yeah. Um, and the opposite person is not going to talk. Yeah. And those roles are reversed. But okay. um, we, we try to work really hard to balance the that level of guests so that there, there is, we don't run into having one person over talk everyone else or dominate the 
if you the conversation. If you figured that out, please let me know. I know. I, I, I've gotten like one one star and one two star, and I was like, I know that's because some episodes I've talked too much, and it's just like I can't. I just want to tell stories. I just yeah. want to <laughs> enjoy my it, time it, sitting with somebody. Like, it, it's hard, and that the premise of our podcast is that we're sitting at dinner having conversations with people, and so we some conversations are just so good we don't want them to to last. So you know, and then. Like Jocelyn will go into telling a story, and you just want to hang on every word she's saying, right. and you want that story to, to to keep going. And so, you know, there are moments where um, people do, I wouldn't say talk too much or over talk, but um, there's just moments where someone is so captivating that you just have to let them. Yeah. Keep and they feed off of each other's yeah. energy. I yeah. think when you've got one person like that, that can be very captivating that everyone else is like, oh, in my story, you know, and yeah, tell yeah. me more yeah. or let me so relate to this. That has definitely probably been one of the hardest things for us is yeah. like navigating that because it's not something that we feel like we're particularly skilled at. Well, it's like in improv, it's yes and. So mm-hmm. you constantly want to keep the ball moving yeah. forward and do the yes and. Sometimes yes and leads to, wait, why was I talking about <laughs> gun control? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. On, a, on the art podcast, I talked about gun control for 20 minutes. I was like, <laughs> wait, how did we get here? Yeah, where was like, I going where, with where, this? Where were you talking? Yeah. And I also knowing my place, try not to be mansplaining, mm-hmm. but it's also, I'm a giant nerd, so I get excited about that. I went and saw the Barbie film with a friend of mine who I've, she's significantly younger than me. I've known her since she was 13 because I worked with her parents at the paper. And at the end, we're standing outside talking about the movie, and there was a moment I was like, oh shit, you didn't get some of the references. And I was like, did you understand what the beginning was? And she was like, N- no. It's like, fuck. I looked at her and I was like, how do I say this without sounding mansplaining to you? It's a direct... Re- Have you all seen Barbie? Oh, mm-hmm. yeah. Mm-hmm. Do you all understand the opening? Yeah, it's the 2001. Boom. Okay. She had never seen 2001. And I was like, did you understand when he said, when she said, are you shining me right now? And she's like, nope. It's like, well, that's from The Shining. <laughs> and, and I'm sitting there and the whole time I'm like, I looked at her and I was like, how do I do this without sounding like I'm doing the thing they said in the film about, let me explain the Godfather to you. Where it's just like, Jesus. <laughs> yeah. It's like, I swear I'm not trying, I'm just a movie nerd. And I got these references. She's like, I don't know any of those. I was like, damn it. I did the one thing I would love to change in that film. And I get, I'm a dude. I wish instead of the Godfather, it was Fight Club. Cause I thought Fight Club would have been a funnier joke. I like the Godfather movie myself. I'm a big fan of yeah. it. And so that one was like, I was that you're right. I, I loved that movie. I mm-hmm. thought that movie was just Barbie. perfect. So I yes, did Barbie Opp- was fantastic. I did Oppenheimer and then Barbie in the same day. Oh yeah. <laughs> okay. I want to, I need to see Oppenheimer too, but Barbie was, was excellent. Excellent. But yeah. when they did do the Godfather part, I was like, Oh man, really? Is that really like such a stereotypical man film? I don't know. I don't, I didn't think so. I feel so. like it, Fight Club, or they could have even done a Christopher Nolan. <laughs> like I don't, I don't know. That was my one mm-hmm. as a film nerd. That was my. I, yeah, I would say Fight Club. Mm-hmm. You would say Fight Club as yeah. a masculine film. I mean, I get. I mean, I like that movie said, too. Godfather. Godfather, because yeah. it's a recognizable. Oh yeah. So my thought was that movie. may have been a nod to you've got mail. Because he, Tom Hanks, explains The Godfather to Meg Ryan. I was like, I guarantee you that oh. was a reference. Oh. See, movie nerd. I, I, yeah, I'm all over that. That makes sense. Okay. Yeah. That okay. was the one I was like, I got what they did. Wish they would have done Fight Club. Because I think Fight Club would have been. And I hate that this is my takeaway. Ryan Gosling deserves a damn Oscar for oh, that film. I thought so. And too. if I'm just Ken is not nominated for an Oscar, I'm going to be pit- I'm going to flip over tables. Because <laughs> it was so ridiculous. It was so. I really like that. Oppenheimer was, ugh, is intense. Yeah, that's it's, what I heard. It, it's one minute long, like segments, through for three hours. Yeah, and it's just like, just can I breathe? For yeah, a friend of mine told me she was basically just gripping, yeah, her arm rails the entire yeah. time. Yeah, it's it's great. Yeah, I want to see it. We're seeing it's in on, the it's on our list. Yeah, mm-hmm. we were gonna do the double feature thing, yeah. but our friend that we we're waiting to go see was out of town and then we were the chance we got to go see barbie 
it didn't work out to do the double feature. But after hearing people talk about it, I was like, I don't know if I could have mm-hmm. handled Done both. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, it, I, I went and saw it the Sunday of opening weekend and started with Oppenheimer at ten forty a.m. in IMAX, and I still had to sit like down in the lower side. It was that packed. Oh wow! And then Barbie, same way. I'm sitting right in the middle. I was like. I'm going to have to pee at some point. And this is going to be uncomfortable. I tripped over so many people just trying to like, sorry, sorry, sorry. Got to go. Sorry, sorry. Get up. Excuse me. Get out of my way. And I, in between, we went to a place, new place in Turkey Creek called Coronado Tacos. Was it good? It's good. It, they're from Cleveland. I'd had them in Cleveland before. Oh, okay. And they hired local artists to do the yeah. art on the walls, which is really Saw cool. the art. It was cool. But the young woman that was waiting on us, she was a big movie nerd too. And her and my friend Courtney and they're talking I was like yeah Ryan Gosling he's hilarious and they're like I've never seen anything he's been funny in I was like go home and watch The Nice Guys with him and Russell Crowe have y'all ever seen no, The Nice I've Guys no I've never even I don't yeah so I we watch a lot of movies and I just don't retain that kind of stuff it's, I don't either so I've seen it but I, I couldn't tell you anything about it it's yeah. from the you <laughs> <Same. laughs> <laughs> 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 the same way too <laughs> The three of us are so silly. We, went, so we weird. went to dinner before Barbie. Mm-hmm. I'm going to have to rewatch it because okay. I missed part of it because we you went. fell asleep. Well, I may have dozed off twice, but that's not uncommon Did for me you? in a movie. Uh-huh. But we went to Mexican. You had a couple margaritas. I, I had the Mac Daddy margarita and then the biggest beer they had. And then I shared a banana margarita with Jacob. And so. Holy shit. And I you were very relaxed. I don't normally drink. <laughs> like that and so did, i'm like i'm i'm ready and then I did can, you go to the cinnabar and did you sit in those nice no we went seats? to downtown west normally we would get a canned drink there because that's like our favorite old person thing to do um <laughs> is get a canned cocktail and go to um downtown west but i was like i can't do that Mm-mm. i ain't even finished my candy oh <laughs> which <laughs> what a shame there's a lot about me uh, <laughs> a friend of mine we went to see Speaking of Ryan Gosling, Blade Runner 2049 at 10.30 p.m. It is a three-hour film. Oh, He fell no. asleep for 30 minutes. And at the end, he woke up and he looked at me. He's like, we were the only two people in the theater. And he's like, what did I miss? I was like, not a lot. <laughs> it's a lot of beautiful shots. That's what you missed. It's like a lot of slow motion. That's mm-hmm. all you missed. You didn't miss much. <laughs> uh, Barbie, I, I want to see it again. I do, like, too. I, I do, yeah. too. Mm-hmm. I feel like there yeah. were lots of little... Yeah. Little things think? I'd like, like to it? pick up on again. I liked it. Um, well, the when you, you were saw. asleep, yeah, when you were yeah. like, um, I did like it, and I want to rewatch it, but I, I felt like I don't want to say it was a movie made for women mm-hmm. because it wasn't, but there was definitely things to celebrate women in, mm-hmm. and there was definitely things that men needed to learn, yeah. mm-hmm. and she did a great way of doing it. Yeah. yeah. Um, we went with Jocelyn to see it, and um, I mean, I cried during the movie. Shock! Um, but <laughs> I, yes. the biggest cry was afterward when Jocelyn said, um, "As a trans person, I felt seen mm-hmm. through this whole movie." Oh. I did. There was the one Barbie who's a trans Barbie. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I picked up on that. My friend did not. When we left, I was like, I think that was a trans. She, mm-hmm. She's like, no, I don't think that. I was like, I think mm-hmm. it was, man. You got to look that shit up. Cause mm-hmm. Well, it, and, uh, and that's what Jocelyn said. You know, it is a trans person's Bertney, mm-hmm. um, is what she said. Um, and when that. Damn, Billy, I have a show. Uh, song that comes song. on. Oh, mm-hmm. my Lord. Mm-hmm. I know. I've listened to it since. Just I, in the car, and I'm like crying is. driving down the road. Mm-hmm. So I may have undercut that with my friend. I was like, is that Phoebe Bridgers? And she's like, no, I think it's Billy Eilish. Like, all right, all right. Oh, all right. man. She wrote it in an hour. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and Holy she wrote shit. it because Greta Gerwig asked her, said, I want this song. I want you to write me a song, and I want it to be Barbie's heart song. Mm-hmm. And within an hour... That's she insane. and her she and her brother put that all together, recorded it on their phone or something, and Although, sent yeah. it if, to her. If you really want to cry, go on TikTok and look at the audio for that song and all the videos that go. They're all the hopeful sadness like that go along. It's like fuck. I don't. It's nine thirty in the morning. I don't need to cry. I was trying not to like audibly sob during that part of the movie like i was like holding it in oh no you go to the movies with us and something like that happens it's a whole roll of gays that are, are crying 
I mean, we, we do. But I wanted to. Um, not all of our female friends got to go. I wanted to go with our female friends for that reason. Mm-hmm. I thought it was something that was made to celebrate females. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, and then that's like when um, the new Little Mermaid came out. I told John, I said, my only want for this is to go. I never want to go to a movie on opening night, but I wanted to go mm-hmm. so I could see the joy on all these yeah. people who finally got to see themselves. On, like I wanted to experience that joy with them. Um, that's so. But that's why, and that was part of what I wanted to do with Barbie. I wanted to be able to celebrate. Mm-hmm. With the females in my life, an opportunity yeah, for them. Yeah, you wanted to witness that mm-hmm. whole again, again yeah. the difference. You're wanting to experience the joy. I start getting mad at people for shitting on it. When I went and saw the Ghostbusters film with Melissa McCarthy and mm-hmm. all the, I, which I went and saw it. I did not. I was like, but this not movie is not for me. I, but I saw all these little girls. Yeah, like looking up at that, and then when people start getting mad, I was openly on Twitter like, "Fuck you, shut the fuck <laughs> up, <laughs> shut the fuck up." This it's not, not for you. For Go yeah. fuck yourself. Yeah. You got the Blu-ray of Ghostbusters. Watch that, and and Ghostbusters two s- mostly sucks. So fuck you. <laughs> like yeah. I was just going off on people of like, shut the fuck up. It's about the little. I, I, I saved one photo of a little girl looking. At like the stand in there, it's like this is a four mother. I got a, I get angry. Yeah, <laughs> I'm been, my father's son. I get days angry watching TikToks of. I remember you were a mess about watching that. The, watching the, the trailer. Mermaid. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh yes. I mean, oh yeah. Just, the I, mermaid. Oh I shit. Just, yeah. John, <laughs> I was at home and John called me, and it, obviously I've been crying. He's like, "What are you doing?" He said, are you doing what I said? I was like, yes. I was like, I've been sitting here all morning watching these TikToks of <laughs> people watching this trailer. There, <laughs> there I, is I watched a, a few of those there too, is a, Dustin. a black writer that I follow, and he was talking, and he said, man, Barbie is white, wo- white women's uh, uh, Black Panther. <laughs> he was just like, holy shit. He was like, man, they're going all in. He's like, I'm all here for it. And he was like, I had my Black Panther. It's like white women have this. He was like, "Go for it!" Yeah. He's like, "This is amazing." He was like, "It was yeah, meaningful. It really was." Mm-hmm. He was like, "Fuck these studios that don't think that people other than dudes go see movies. That's yeah. the mm-hmm. dumbest thing I've ever heard in my yeah. in my life." Mm-hmm. Hell, Black Panther made like one point six billion. Barbie's probably gonna make that much. Like, I mean, she's already hit over yeah. a billion. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. The only bad part about this is the CEOs were like, cool, we're gonna, uh, we got hungry, hungry hippos coming. It's like, you got the wrong message out of this, brother. Yeah. <laughs> the wrong message oh, yeah, this. I read that. I read that Mattel was gonna be putting out all these movies based on, on games toys, and yeah. toys and mm. stuff. And I was like, no. You got the wrong message right. from that movie. Yeah. Right. No. Don't think you can follow that in the same way. Okay. See how I'm gonna bring it back. <laughs> I'm gonna bring it back. So the podcast... You all eat at the podcast, so have you, <clears throat> you always, you did not go to culinary, but when you were younger, have you all always been into cooking or baking or making food? Yeah. Is that always yeah. been a... That was actually how mm-hmm. but the, the conversation started with Dustin and I, because I've always sort of had this passion idea for bringing people together around the table and that cooking or not cooking that that sharing a meal together is actually how you um get to know people better and you can understand people who are not maybe exactly like you um and so that was sort of the dream was to one day be able to do that at the center just to have like community dinners where you sat down beside somebody that you didn't know and shared a meal with them and we're just simply curious that our job is not to fix each other or to, you know, just to understand someone else's experience that's not my own and not in a gross way. Not like it's like, you know, the queer man's job to explain to me what, you know, but that we are just curious about each other and learn from each other. Right before the pandemic, I'd started a thing where I would invite two separate couples over here and I was like I'll cook the main dish you all cook the sides 
so I can introduce people in smaller environments that's where cool. they're more comfortable. Yeah. And the pandemic happened and I stopped doing that. Yeah. Well, that's I'm when Chris I, going into the pandemic a lot of people were doing things online and that's what I was like, oh, that's interesting. Like I never thought about doing a Facebook live thing or whatnot until the pandemic happened. And mm -hmm. I wanted to be able to, I, cause I love to entertain and cook and I wanted to have these little dinners where I brought, you know, people who are not necessarily like minded, but they are common mm. in something, you know, so, Maybe I, there was five people from different religious backgrounds that we just sat down and had conversations about your background. Um, never doing a sales pitch or, you know, this, well, this is why you're wrong. That's why I'm right kind of thing. But just to be able to understand each other. And then Chrissy and I met and we were talking about that. And we're like, hmm, maybe that's something we could do. Uh, town hall style or whatnot at the center and it just was never anything that found its way to be able to do and then the podcast came about um or the network did and so we were like what if we did it as a podcast so knox pride they have a main podcast yeah so there there's a knox pride network um, there's okay. a media network so there's well eventually starting next year will be a whole youtube channel and, and all that okay. but yeah so there's the knox pride podcast which is everything that's knox pride related things that are going on with knox pride things that are community based and, and things like that and then there's ours and then there's a third one which is based around food insecurities um okay. and and knoxville um that will be coming out man see i would almost i'm just trying to connect the dots I understand food insecurities, but I would also suggest them. It's like maybe have. Do you all know who Chris Battle is? Battlefield Farms. Sounds that familiar. name sounds really familiar. He's a he's a guy who essentially, if you have land, he will put a farm on your land. He's a, a black man who is a farmer, and he was like, there are so many food deserts, and people don't know oh. how to grow shit. And he's amazing. Chris is amazing, and. Uh, He's a former preacher, and he was like, I have no problem walking up and knocking on somebody's door and say, you got a big side yard. Can I take that over <laughs> and put a farm in here? Uh, like, he he's the awesome. best. And it's yeah. like, you can come and pick up vegetable. You can pick up whatever. And I had him in Jeff's yard. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, my <laughs> but I know he is, good spot. he is. I, I understand food insecurities, uh, bulimia, all of that, but having somebody like that from that perspective i think yeah not, to, not mansplaining really... not i'm just no, like here's a, a suggestion, suggestion. So that, that you wouldn't that normally podcast think podcast is led by john the executive director okay. of, of knox pride um and so the whole reason the network came about was um the united way wanted to get involved with knox pride and they okay. said we have this amount of money that we can designate for y'all to do this but in order to do it, it has to be focused around, one of the shows has to be focused around food insecurities, um, particularly um, the lack of food being provided to people. Yeah. Um, you know. Oh, it is that. It's not yeah, about yeah. bulimia yeah. or... No. no. Okay. Um, and so through that, we got connected with Beardle Beardsley's yeah. Farm. So they came and put in a small farm at the center and now we have a free fridge that's outside and so they they work with outlying farms to help sock the fridge and then they also come and help um teach on um how to do self-sustaining farming yeah um, and they'll they tend the the little garden we have and then that stuff goes into the fridge so that we can not only provide food bags of things for our houseless neighbors who don't have access to running water or a stove or things like that. Um, but they're still getting some kind of nutritional food that they, so if it's a fresh tomato off of the vine, they can take that and they don't have to worry about having refrigeration to, to right. keep that because then it's sustainable for them in the moment. Okay. Well, that's awesome. Okay. But I, I'm, 
interested to know about this. I'm sure John would be interested to know mm-hmm. as well about this other guy to have him. Yeah. Battle for yeah. the, yeah. the The whole thing is to bring light to the issue and also talk about our partners in trying to resolve this. Because yeah. it's mm-hmm. one of the goals for Knox Pride is within the next 10 years, hopefully sooner, to be able to alleviate um, food security issues altogether yeah. in Knoxville. And beyond, hopefully, but yeah, it's having him on and talking to him about that. It was insane. It was just insane. No, because I grew up around fast food and all that shit, and you don't think about the healthy, nutritious stuff. That's not well. That's like when we open the center. Um, you know, we have a food pantry, um, and the person who is our sound engineer is the person that's over our food pantry. And the first thing he did was research everything that goes into if you went to a food bank what would be in that as far as like a balanced meal goes or whatnot and so we were doing that and then we realized oh the majority of the people that are coming to our um, food pantry don't have access to ways to cook or even a can opener yeah or even a can opener because we work with a lot of not only houseless um, members of the community, but youth who, um, you know, are starting out because they've been kicked out of their home for mm. being queer. Um, and so they're living in a hotel. So all they have is a microwave. So we're like, okay, so we've provided them all this food that takes a stovetop pans and, and yeah. whatnot to cook. And so we had to learn how to adjust to that. And so it was like, oh, we need things with pop tops things that can be cooked in a microwave, but um, something that may, you know, hopefully would have some kind of nutritional value to it. Uh, unfortunately, those convenient foods don't always have that. And so... Loaded with sodium. Yeah. For the most part, yeah. Okay. Uh, into baking and cooking as a, as a youth or growing up? Um, no. No? <laughs> no. I like to eat. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think that's a commonality we all have. <laughs> no, I was not. I've never, I didn't grow up with family members or anybody that cooked or did anything. And it wasn't in, until I met my husband and he's a great cook. Um, but I do like to bake and I'm, I mean, that's sort of a new thing for me. And I, I do really love, I think Chrissy and Dustin were definitely onto something when they decided to, that the format was going to be a dinner style thing because breaking bread with people helps open yeah. you up. And it really does. I mean, obviously we have three hour yeah. podcasts where people, you know, we just chat the whole time. So I do understand that though I'm not that much great of a cook or anything, food is definitely a love language that many, many people speak. So, okay. Yeah. And how about you? Like, who are you? Um, yeah, I grew up, um, cooking. Uh, I'm not, I love desserts. I'm not much of a baker, um, but cooking you a meal, um, entertaining is what I like to do. That was one of the things I got from my grandmother. That was, my grandmother made sure that we knew how to cook and my grandfather knew, made sure we knew how to do basic maintenance on a car because they, he didn't want us to have to go to a dealership or a, a mechanic and get taken, you know, um, as he says. <laughs> That's some Southern shit right yeah. there. I know. As <laughs> long as you can cook and work on your car, oh my boy. God. Um, and, of course, I you know I took up with my grandmother more, um, and we spent all of our time cooking because she was from a time where you cooked a full meal. You had yeah. your meat and mm-hmm. in, in three sides and bread yeah. and, and a dessert. And, that, that's yeah. the way my husband mm-hmm. is. When I met him, it was like... Wow, we are eating, aren't we? Yeah. <laughs> Every and, then Sunday, meal. and then Sundays, you got together as a family, and so then yep. you're, you're cooking even more. And um, and so I that the my love of feeding people physically and emotionally and spiritually extended from that. <laughs> my my so my grandparents had two acres in Corrington where they had a farm. But they shared it with like a bunch of different people. And then they had a little uh, garden in their back. I say little. It was probably 
40 foot by 20 foot. Like, it was not that small to where my uncle would have to come over and actually till the land because they couldn't do it. So it was always whatever granny she would make it. But also, my grandfather had a sweet tooth, so he had to have something sweet at the mm-hmm. end of every meal. So she was making pies. She was making cakes. She was making – she would let me spoon out brown sugar and just eat it straight. Ooh. But the best, I tell all that to say this because I have her cast iron – uh, skillet in there she i hate pinto beans i hate it's not my the smell Ugh. so whenever they would want pinto beans she would make me she would take her cast iron skillet put bacon in there and then pull the bacon out and then she cook fried cornbread Ooh, in take the bacon that out grease. in the bacon grease yeah. and then hamburger patties so i would have fried cornbread cheese bacon or a hamburger, bacon, cheese, fried cornbread. And I would have two of those. So when I graduated high school, I was 6'6", 330. Because <laughs> I would just eat the shit out of whatever <laughs> she made. Amazing. Everything she made was ridiculous. And none of it was healthy. <laughs> none of it was healthy. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's like fried bad. okra. I, yeah. I can make her fried okra now, which is very good. Love it. But her, it took me forever to figure out her sweet peas. I would keep adding butter and sugar. It's like, it's still not there. And then I finally figured out, I was like, holy shit. She put like two or three sticks of butter and like four <laughs> cups of sugar. Yeah, it's probably always like, more than like, you like, think. It's like, <laughs> you, you pour it out and it goes, the, it doesn't, there's no liquid. It just goes like that. It's, <laughs> uh, okay, so. Before you were getting into this, were you fans of podcasts? Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. No. <laughs> really? Except for Rambling Man. You love yeah, Rambling Man. I love Man. Rambling Man. <laughs> <laughs> love I'm going to clip that out. That's going to be a commercial. <laughs> <laughs> Use it. Uh, I mean, I listen to him. My husband is a big podcast person. And so uh, I think maybe that's why I didn't, get, I wasn't into him so much was because anytime we traveled, we were playing yeah. a podcast, usually a murder podcast of some sort. <laughs> yeah, and that's I, why I got started too. And I was like, I don't, I don't, this is not what, but I also was never in a position where I was in a place long enough to, to yeah. listen to it or my, the companies I worked for, I wasn't in a place where I could just pop in headphones and, and listen to a podcast while I worked. So it wasn't really ever convenient for me to do it. So, Mm -hmm. I, yeah. You you do have to have time. I mean, Mm -hmm. you do have to have uninterrupted time. It started for me when I used to, my oldest stepson played, he was on the um, Hardin Valley Academy bowling team, and they practiced and had their competitions out in Oak Ridge. And I would schlep him to and fro, and... That was when I started to really get into podcasts. And now that I bake and decorate my cookies, I have, that's all I do is have that, have people talking in my ears all day long. Hmm. I I love it. Yeah. I listen to them in the car. I can't listen to them while at work though. It's too. Really? My brain is too, I don't know. Multitasking-ish. Yeah. Yeah. I think so. I think so. It's just my brain. Yeah, I love it. There's that's too many when tabs I'm... open. So. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and one of them, music's coming out yeah. of, and you don't know which one it mm-hmm. is. Yeah. So music, there's a couple that will listen to this, Tim and Stephanie. Tim Glasner and Stephanie Romer. Cause, and I only say that. Hi, Stephanie. Because she Stephanie. fussed at me for not saying the last names. She was like, you throw out these names, and nobody knows who the hell these people are. I was like, all right, Stephanie. And every time I say names, I quote her. And I'm, I haven't gotten a text from her yelling at me yet, but it'll come <laughs> one of these days. Maybe this time. But her, they owned a house in Charleston, a beach house. Mm-hmm. And they would drive. So, and they also would go to Florida, and they would bank episodes of Ramblin' Man. So, like, the first time I actually hung out with her and Tim, she's like, this is weird. I'm used to just listening to you talk, <laughs> and now you're here. And I was like, I'm not some, I'm not. Ryan, go- what are you talking about? I'm some <laughs> schmuck that's on a podcast. Come on, man. You can. I've had a couple of people tell me that. They're like, I listened to your podcast before I knew you, and it's weird to talk to you. I was like, thanks. That makes me feel a lot better. So since then, have you gotten into podcasts? 
I, I mean, when I have the, the chance, there's a, a few I like mm-hmm. um, that John has got me on, too. Um, I, I guess I, I had a misconception of podcasts. I always... I guess I thought there was only one style, and and it was and the that's true crime. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> or along that set, and so that really wasn't like I I didn't yeah. want someone to sit and reread a news oh, story God. to me or something mm-hmm. like that. But then he got into some other ones that I was like, oh, I like this, and so then putting in the time to research podcasts, I you know was able to find some that. Okay. I related to. Do you know like, some of the ones you like? Um, we'll yeah, my outs. favorite one is um, Beach Too Sandy, uh, Water Too Wet. Oh, Jody. Oh, it's funny. It, I've just got to. Oh, okay. Beach Too Sandy, Water Too Wet. It's a brother and sister. And so each episode is a different um, topic um, of um, reviews. So all they do is like the. We'll pick oh. maybe dollar store, mm-hmm. and so they read all these reviews, whether bad or good, about dollar. But they try to find the funniest ones or the most ridiculous ones, and that's the the whole the whole premise of it. It is. It's it's super okay. funny. Mm-hmm. I'm adding that. Yeah, it's good. Okay. It's like a good easy one to listen yeah. to. I, I agree. Like it's not. I was listening to it today, as a matter mm-hmm. of fact. Do y'all know? I'm going to go on a side tangent here. Do you know who the director William Friedkin is? He just passed away. He directed The Exorcist, The French yes. Connection. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yes. So some he was batshit insane, and would speak his mind on interviews. So somebody did a breakdown of like, here are twelve of the most. He is the most chaotic person ever to walk this earth. And it was like he created an Amazon account just to review a DVD copy of his own film. He, and it said something like, this is not the fully remastered version. We will be releasing that in the fall. Do not buy this version. It is dog shit. Dash William Friedkin. <laughs> I was like, that's the greatest thing. You will love this. Then. Okay. Because mm-hmm. mm-hmm. there are real reviews. And then there are obviously some that people have gotten really clever and mm-hmm. just written. Mm-hmm. So, and I'm going to backtrack for, so about food being community. For mm-hmm. me, it's uh, cigars. So that's all like humidors full of cigars up there. Okay. And uh, my friends and I joke that we try to be the non-douchey cigar smokers. We're not the guys going, oh, the aroma. Fuck that. It's all about just bullshitting and sitting around and all that. Mm-hmm. So we were sitting in a cigar shop in Merchants of Beer, and they started reading reviews for the Haribo gummies. The sugar-free ones and what it would do to your body. Oh. If you've never, have, how have they not covered this on there? Because it's oh, they probably oh, they probably have. have. Okay, yeah. they or have like three hundred yeah. episodes yeah. or something. But so one of the guys ordered gummies, sugar-free gummies, and the next time he walked in, he just walked in and slammed them on the table. He's like, "All right, we're doing this," and all the guys were like. Why are we going to shit ourselves? What, what are we doing? What are we doing? It makes you, it like cleans out your system. Oh, mm-hmm. And literally one of the guys <clears throat> sat there and he got just drunk enough to where he was pounding him. And I'm not kidding. The, it was almost like a cartoon where you saw the air doing this <laughs> as he ran away. We're like, what were you doing? He's like, I got a little too drunk. Oh, and I that's forgot. horrible. <laughs> I just kept, it's a problem. Kept that is a problem. Why okay. there's sugar-free gummy bears? I don't even know. That's mm-hmm. stupid. Yeah, I'm, it's like on record BF saying sugar-free awesome. gummy bears are stupid. All right, agree. Stop it. <laughs> Stop it. Throw them in the trash. Don't do it. That's gonna be the pull quote. <laughs> uh, had you all been involved in Knox Pride previously? Yes, mm-hmm. I'm. I'm married to the executive director, <laughs> um, and so I, he and I came on board to Knox Pride at the same time. Okay, and then he took over the executive director position. Um, I didn't work for several years. Um, one of the last year I didn't work was the first year that the center was open. Okay, and and so I was a, a part of opening the center. So. So, yes, yeah, so I've been. <laughs> if there's an award for super volunteer, yes, that's yeah, you. you. That's, that's mine. Yeah. I'm claiming it. Yeah. Okay. I was not. I mean, I've always been a supporter, but I wasn't involved until now. And I've gotten brought into the fold and 
I roped her in. Yep. Very happy. <laughs> Very happy about that. Yes. Well, we'll call that voluntold. I voluntold you. <laughs> it's good, though. It's good. Yeah. I, yeah. yeah. I needed it's, it. Maybe you can clear this up. I had always heard that our Pride Parade was the third biggest one in the country. Yes. Um, I That, I believe, is true. We are the largest free Pride okay. in the U.S. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I think, yeah... Um, the last, last year's parade. I was blown away by how big it was. Like, I had no said, idea. But the, the last parade before the pandemic, there were over yeah. 10,000 people. Yeah. Um, I, I have marched in four. One for myself. I did a 40 before 40. And I was like, I would like to be a part of it. Cause I know what I look like and I know what you would think. Mm-hmm. And, I was, and that's. Uh, my dad and I do not uh, hug or tell one another we love one another. But he came to that last one and actually stepped out in the road and shook my hand. I was like, I think that's the first time my dad's maybe shook my hand since I wow. graduated college. I was like, holy shit. And he was smiling. I was like, holy shit. Dad, I'm not coming out. I'm still dumbass. But I mean, <laughs> like, it was like, thanks. It's like that felt very good. Uh and then uh, Big Brothers Big Sisters, they decided they wanted to be involved, and I took photographs for them, for it, and it was that was really cool to see them, a nonprofit like that, stand up, step up, and be like, "No, fuck y'all, we're going to do this." I thought that was really cool, but I'd always told people, I was like, "I think it's third biggest one and in the country." That sounds great. I mean, John could tell you all that information, but um, yeah, we're we're in the I know the top five. Yeah, um, as far as parades go, and, and it's a it's a daunting task, <laughs> very daunting task to put on those parades. And one of my buddies, John, uh, again the different reactions from people. There was a small group of dudes protesting on one of the corners. And he stood in front of him and flipped him off for the entire parade. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and I went up behind him and I gave him a hug. And he was like, oh, oh hey, man. <laughs> went, Wait, no, it's like, oh, hey, man. <laughs> yeah, when we came on board, the protesters, there was probably 30. Um, and then that, I mean, last year. I, I was going to say that was last year, the one there before was the five, pandemic, there was hardly anybody. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. They just, and what we try to tell everyone is don't give them the reaction oh, they're right. looking for. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, I almost, I almost, <laughs> again, the difference in, uh, I, 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 it's hard not I to. enjoy combativeness. I had come from when it was next to the event that was up next to the convention center. I was coming back that way, Mm -hmm. and there was a younger dude and his wife or girlfriend, and they had a bullhorn, but there were three cops, like, talking to him, and the wife was filming the cops interacting with him, and he was, I assume, of Muslim because of the clothes that he was wearing, and it had took all I have, because I'm going to do the example of this when I walked by, because he was a very small man not just grabbing him by the head and giving him the deepest tongue kiss I've ever given anybody in my life (laughs) and just turn the cops going, let's go. Come on, come on, take me. I'll have bail money before you get me up there. Fuck this guy. Let's go. Let's go. The (laughs) only time we got to walk in a parade, um, we walked with the troop and we were, we had turned to come on to gay street and that's where the protesters were. And the one guy, um, (laughs) the way the parade stopped we were like right there in front of them um and he called me a pedophile um and um threatened me if i came near his kids um and i said first of all i don't know who you or your kids are i said second of all your son definitely isn't my type i said now you (laughs) if you wanted to go in the alley I we can go. You're you're my type. <laughs> oh, um, and he just looked at me, and then the parade started moving. But <laughs> so uh, now I'm trying to remember the uh, the uh, drag show that happened at the Bijou like three months ago. Why can't I not pull their name? 
Oh, the um, shit. The drag Christmas show. Uh, and oh no, no, wasn't the Christmas show. It no. was somebody who was on RuPaul. Oh, Latrice. 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 Yeah. yeah. So I took my little sister to that. That was oh, what yeah. We we, and, we were upstairs. Oh yeah, that's right. You text. Yeah, that's right. And but I was shit scared before that. I was like, if there are Proud Boys, because there had been Proud Boys out front of a show at the Tennessee. I was like, oh. I may be in trouble. I was like, because if they touch my sister, I will put them in the concrete. And then if my dad finds out, he will put them, <laughs> he will put them beneath the car. It's like, no, we don't fuck around. We don't know. We don't. So I was what, literally what? like shaking, taking her to drop her off. Nobody was there. Mm-hmm. Nobody. Thank God. The yeah. Christmas because, one was. They didn't, yeah, they, the, didn't, yeah. they didn't get the, they didn't get the reaction that they wanted at the Christmas one. Mm-hmm. So they. There was also, the Christmas one coincided with the drag bill too, yeah. I think mm-hmm. was the, okay. was the reason that it was so, yeah. um, so I got the it's so negative response that I did. Mm-hmm. It's so fucking stupid. Yeah. But also on Latrice's, I mean, unless you knew, Latrice and that she was a drag queen. Yeah. There wasn't anything in the advertisement uh, about mm-hmm. it being a, a drag show of any sort. So it's not. Mm-hmm. These people have these flags set online to for keywords. Yeah, yep. yeah. and and it just it didn't trigger those keywords. And so we um, had a good time. It was a great show. It was, it was a hell of a show. It is funny because I've been t- my little sister is eleven and a half years younger than me. So I've been taking her shows since she was very little. To a lot of shows she, I have not, sh- I should not have taken her to. <laughs> and I took her to see John Waters when she was like twelve or thirteen. And I just looked at her at one point. I was like, "You can't tell mom or dad about any of this shit. <laughs> I won't get in trouble." <laughs> uh, but she, I took her to see Lou Reed. Took her to see uh, Elvis Costello. Took her to see Nine Inch Nails when she was like fourteen. Same thing. I was like, "We don't talk about anything that's happening at this show." <laughs> Because this is bonkers. Uh, okay, so what made you all start the Curious Table? Because I know you came in later, but what made you all start it? Just that having that conversation of wanting to bring people together um, mm-hmm. and learn about things that we were curious about that we didn't mm-hmm. know anything about, but also that other people may not know anything about. Um for me, my I love going out to dinner with people, um, and I love sitting in the middle of the table so I can hear the conversation all around the table. Um, that's when I'm my happiest. Um, just seeing people connect and interact with each other, and you know, for that hour, hour and a half, there's there's no other care mm-hmm. other than that person that's sitting next to them that they're having whatever conversation is and this conversation down here is different than this conversation um and i don't have any input into any of it but i love just watching people interact um, and respond to each other and just and then you leave the table having learned something that you didn't even know that you learned Mm. um and so it for me doing the podcast gave me the opportunity to do that on a bigger scale. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. I think for me, well, so my involvement with the Pride Center is we have a queer kiddo who's actually trans. And so that was sort of our introduction to the community here. Um, and I think I felt like we sort of had this privilege of being like loved and accepted into the community in a way that not everybody Um, gets to experience Mm -hmm. and so I really wanted to be able to have those conversations with people in an open forum like that where people could learn because um, and it was one of the reasons that we wanted Lauren to be on the podcast too is just because we feel like there's so many things that we can all learn that we just don't know what we don't know and so um, sitting down and having curious conversations and again not trying to change anybody's minds or change point of view just to get curious and learn about each other it's i i had god i'm always trying to get things right when i say things uh they are non-binary but also go go by she her 
They mm-hmm. go by they, them, or she, her. Mm-hmm. So I always feel weird going like, say this as a joke. Can you pick one so I can know that I'm the, I wanted to say the right thing. I want, I want to say the right thing. Pro tip, whatever they normally say first, like if they say they, she, that means like my kiddo is they, he. So that means that they prefer they over he. Some people don't have a preference, but a lot of times they do. Yeah, this person, they are a a professor Mm -hmm. and they have both in their signature on their email. Mm -hmm. Whichever one is first. As a friend, I like giving shit. Like it's, it's fun. They also don't. The... We talked there on a very early episode and said, I know your, your, what was it? Your, your heart is in the right place. Mm-hmm. So I'm never, but I was talking to them cause they were younger. And I was like to be this age and see the arc of everything that has changed or mm-hmm. opened up or is different from when I was a kid. Mm-hmm. Cause also growing up in sports, I'm embarrassed by the amount of times I said the F word, mm-hmm. the, the F a word, not the F U word. I'm never embarrassed about how often I say the F. F you word. No, <laughs> screw that. Uh, but it's there. But there came a point when I was in college, I'm sitting there in class, and there are two dudes sitting over the side, and we were in sociological problems and change, and they start talking about LGBT. It was just LGBT. I'm old. It was just that at that point. And these two guys just fucking and just start going off. And I'm just sitting there like, they sound like idiots. Is that what I sound like? Fuck that. I don't want to sound like that. That's stupid. And then just never again. Like, it's a weird, because again, not to keep going back to what I look like or what I represent. I also get told a lot what I look like. Well, you have it easy. You've always, it's like I also grew up on the east side, usually being the only white person in the room. I've had a gun in my face on three different occasions. I've been in a lot of fights. Maybe that's obvious for me going, I want to, kiss a dude for protesting (laughs) i want to combat a little bit more but what i was telling katie was it's been interesting seeing the changes over the year hopefully Mm -hmm. for the better yeah because when i was a kid i was telling one of my friends i was like i i've struggled with the non-binary part the they them Mm -hmm. and i said i think it's because when i was young i had friends that were gay that always refer to their partners as they, them to shield themselves for not letting on that their partners were gay. I was like, so it was almost like a protective thing. Mm -hmm. I was like, I'm trying, I'm working my ass off trying to do the right thing. Mm -hmm. I was like, but I was like, in my head, I was like, that was one weird, not hang up, but just a weird thing that didn't click until like a month ago. I was like, Oh, that's why. Because when I was young, I was having to be careful to take care of my friends and say they, them, instead of your boyfriend, if it was a dude, or your girlfriend, if it was a woman. That, that's that been a weird tra- uh, change in my time. And I always, what I'd said on there was like, my parents, God love them, they are the nicest people in the world, they don't have any hate in their heart. I take that back, dad does not like rich people, so that's one thing. Uh, but I was like, man, I worry about them because they aren't as involved. Mm -hmm. So they may not know what is the right thing to say. Well, that's the point of, yeah. 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 That's kind of what we're trying to reach out to people. Even if your parents aren't listening to no the podcast they better not be listening to this shit but if <laughs> i say somebody, a lot of stuff well, about no, them our, well i know no, i'm our, just kidding I'm, again, little, I'm just kidding a little crazy too but i mean if you're listening to a podcast like ours and you can have that conversation with your parents yeah. mm-hmm. i mean like for me as somebody that has just come into it purely from an ally perspective and i'm with you like i know i definitely question everything like i want to make sure i'm never offensive and i want to make sure i'm always saying the right thing but as we talked on one of our last ones, you don't have to have the megaphone to be considered the ally. You can yeah. have these small conversations with two people, and if you get those, if you get through to those two people, then you've made a difference. Yeah. And it doesn't, no matter how small it is, you've made a difference. Well, yeah, my my sister is queer, and every once in a while, my mom is very liberal leaning. Every once in a while, they'll be like, "All right, you need to come over here and explain to Dad about." <laughs> And he's not even super like right leaning. He just it's just funny hearing them because when the whole thing about Juneteenth happened, my mom and sister literally 
texted me and said, I need you to come over here and explain this to him because he's not understanding it. So I'm sitting there talking to him. It ended up backfiring. It's so like, all oh, holidays are bullshit. Walmart's open on Thanksgiving and Christmas. Holidays should actually be holidays. Like, if we're going to do this, let's, let's do this. I, I don't like... That's a weird, like, roundabout way of saying it. I was like, we either need to treat things with reverence or we need to not. Like, mm-hmm. either way. I was like, also... What does it, how does it affect you? And he was like, oh, it doesn't. I was like, there you go. Yeah. Well, and I, I mean, think that's, that's sort of thing. the thing. That's that's always my biggest hope is that yeah. um, a lot of the stuff is just shit that we need to pa- unpack yeah. on our own. It's not um, it's not Jocelyn's job as the yeah. the trans spokesperson to make sure that everyone knows how to. to that emotional labor is real and it is hard, um, and so. One of the things that I feel like is as a straight ally who has a trans kiddo is like, I haven't carried that around with me for the last, you know, my entire life. life. And so that's getting to know people and getting to understand their experiences without it being about my shit that I need to unpack, but just getting to see the human and what they are and who they are and what they're about makes it a lot easier for you to make those changes when you have a real connection and you can, where it's not just like this arbitrary they, them or whatever, when it's actually a human connection, it's a whole lot easier to rewire your brain. That's that's how it happened with my dad. He was watching, what is that movie called? Steven Weber from wings. Again, I'm gonna go down film nerd. I think it's called like Jeffrey and it's about a, gay couple and they kiss and he's like I, I couldn't watch that shit I had to turn it off so that's mm-hmm. one year and then like three years later my little sister had a gay uh, friend a dude and <laughs> dad was talking about him he's like that's my buddy we order pizzas and we eat the whole pizza together like I was like oh, all it took was one person that you mm-hmm. met and then you don't give a shit anymore like you're more on that side like There's a lot of nuances uh, 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 in life. Not it's to not real simplify black and white. This, not to <laughs> simplify this, but like that's hilarious to me. I was like, all it took was you meeting one Joe. That was his name. I can't remember his last name. Sorry, Stephanie. Uh, but Joe. Oh, that's my buddy. We eat pizza because Joe was also a bigger dude. He was, we eat pizza together. It's like, so you're cool with Joe? And he's like, well, yeah. Why wouldn't I be? That's all it took. Well, I mean, that's that. That is. I mean, all it takes is when for the queer community, we've been put in this box outside of society altogether. And so we've been made to represent and be something that people were supposed to be afraid of or see differently. Um, And one of my favorite things that Jocelyn says is um, when she talks about trans people is um, if you don't think trans people are magic, you don't know enough trans people. Um, I think that can be for the whole queer community um if if you don't think the queer community as human beings you don't know enough queer people yeah Mm -hmm. when john and i got married um it was when gay marriage was first legalized but it was only in three states and so we um it was very important for us for that to happen um and dc was only was one of the three places that could be done and so we went to dc we took our family we rented a bus and took our family and and did it up there we had to go three days prior to apply for our marriage license because we were a same-sex couple we couldn't do it the same day um and we were only allowed to get married in the courthouse um i'm not, I'm not shaking my head at you i'm shaking my head at how fucking stupid yeah. that is mm-hmm. um my aunt and uncle live in maryland and so they offered to do the um to do a, a cookout for us afterwards so we could have something um their neighbors were there they asked if they could come and we were like yeah whatever we don't know anyone there so it (laughs) um and when we were leaving his neighbor came up to us and said i came here expecting to have a different opinion about you all Mm. he said but seeing you again sit down and have dinner with your family and people you don't know and seeing that you're normal 
which I mean, <laughs> um, he what said, anyway? it, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, he said, I have a different opinion, mm-hmm. yeah, on all of this now, mm-hmm. and and so welcome to the party. All it took was <laughs> yeah. meeting one person yeah. in the queer community and taking that time to get to know them, yep. um, because the vision he had for us was that you know we were going to have this wedding full of gay people who were naked and and i guess having an orgy or or whatnot <laughs> but um he that's said, the reception that's not, not sorry yeah. <laughs> it's all right. but he said this is is just like any saturday night that we're having and i was like yeah why wouldn't exactly. it exactly that's yeah it i mean you. a burp and fart just like yeah just being human <laughs> yeah I doing mean, human yeah, things so I mean, that is really where it is, is, is meeting one person yeah, mm-hmm. um, and being open up to their story. I mean, you know, and as a queer person, anytime I see someone that is putting in that work, um, it means a lot. And yeah. I don't want, I want you to understand what you said well, earlier goes a long ways. Well, it's a, it's a weird thing of, I, I only realized this like, maybe right before the pandemic, how lucky I was, how I was raised. Cause like my grandfather, grandfather who was born in like 1917. I remember one time I was in high school. I don't know what prompted him to say this, but all of a sudden it's Christmas. And he was just like, we we're hanging out afterwards, sitting around and all the kids playing with presents. He was like, I didn't, I didn't raise my boys to say that word. And he was talking about the N word. And I was like, that's a dude who grew up in Sharps chapel. Born in 1917, mm-hmm. that's saying that shit, like to my dad and his two brothers. And I was like, oh, yeah. Uh, I grew up on the east side, usually being the only white person, went to Fulton when it was two thirds black. Uh, where my grandparents lived, they had their own farm. So that's a, one aspect. The family that lived behind them were Catholic. So I had to learn about Catholicism when I was little because I was friends with the ki- the kid, the grandkids. And then the couple across the street from them um, were in concentration camps. So they had tattoos on their arms. So at four, I'm like, why, why did somebody write on their arms? And I had to learn what that was. I was like, I am very fortunate that I grew up in, around people different than me. Mm-hmm. I am very lucky. So that's why I get so angry. I'm like, it doesn't affect you. Leave people to fuck. Just let people do their thing. And if it's not hurting anybody... Let people do their thing. Mm-hmm. It's stupid. Like, in my my big angry, want to punch people way. It's just let people do their thing, man. It's so I I don't know. I get frustrated a lot because mm-hmm. it's also the big guy privilege of just like <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> like stop stop. <laughs> Are there things you want to see in Knoxville specifically, either in the community, in the Knox Pride community, or in the community at large? And then I'll ask the bigger, the universal, the world, but for now in Knoxville. I think I would like to see more inclusive spaces, openly inclusive spaces, um, queer owned businesses. Um, those are few and far between, um, for a city of our size. Um, yeah, just more more loud allies okay that's what i wish for oh you want us with the megaphones there are people that i think don't think that they should use their voice who would if they the person i was texting with you guys about today okay that that want to use their voice but are not sure where their voice should be um and so that's one of the things that we have a little bit of a bigger platform maybe not not their job to speak for the queer community, but to listen and see how they can be just okay supportive. Yeah. Okay. That. Sorry to sidetrack for a second, but I just talked about this on another one. Okay. <laughs> and it was there is a group. Let her speak. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. And one of my friends was like, well, you ought to come to the conference. I was like, I don't think that's my place mm-hmm. there because that's a women thing. And I think from this side, 
I, I struggle with that sometimes. Like, where is my place and where is not my place? I We always say getting involved and getting to know people in the community more um, on a personal level. I think one of the things that I think Lauren m- models beautifully on the podcast and just in life is her ability to be compassionate and to just listen. She does it really well. Um, and it's the reason that I knew that we could have a trusting, safe relationship to kind of, um, highlight allyship on the podcast. Yeah. Thank you for saying that. I I do think that listening more than talking is (laughs) really important. I think when you're coming into a group where you maybe don't feel like you fit in, you know, or like you just said, you feel like odd coming into a women's group as a man. And I can understand that totally, but well, you do kind of have to start somewhere, I guess. And that can be hard. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'm with you. I would like to see more inclusivity in Knoxville, but I, I and maybe this is just my own b- bubble that I live in, but you know, I'd like to see more people of color and, yeah, you know, ha- having, being able to have a stronger voice. I grew up in South Carolina. It was very diverse and I'm fortunate. Like mm-hmm. you were saying earlier too, Jody, like I feel really lucky. I grew up where I did and then I came here and I was like, whoa, this what? is, it's really, we're really separate here in this area. I think it, I, I, f- I don't feel not comfortable in the let her speak. It's almost more like, are you, are you sure I'm like, okay? Do you being, belong? Yeah. Being here. Cause yeah. my friend and I, we were in Atlanta and there was a club that we walked up to and they had like BLM and the names of all the people, uh, the black people who've gotten killed by cops. And we walk up to it. And my friend who's a very small white woman was like, are, is it okay if we go in here? He's like, yeah, don't be weird about this. It, it, it's okay. Yeah. And we went in, we hung out and people would start talking to us. It's like, it's, it's, stop making it weird. <laughs> like uh, yeah. again, given uh, Love language is food. Mine is giving other people shit because I was raised around dad and uncles. You, if you're not giving somebody shit, what are you doing? Come on. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and, but I was like, no, it's fine. And everybody in there was okay and fine and cool. And I was like, yeah. But there are some times where I'm like, I, I, I let people have their space. I, I don't know. Maybe that's a weird way to put it. But. Yeah. I think it's a, it's a hard needle to thread sometimes. Yeah. But I think that... It can be done. Yeah. It just it just takes some practice. I mean, you just got to keep doing it. Yeah. yeah, you know. There were women's lunches, like entrepreneur lunches, at the Hive back in the day, mm-hmm. because I knew everybody on the panel. I showed up, and it was like, we want to welcome all the women and Jody, because <laughs> I also stood out a little mm-hmm. bit. And I went to two, and I was like, okay, I'm done. I'm not going to go to these anymore. Because <laughs> every time it's and everybody there was like, no, it's totally fine that you came. You're a supporter. I was like, I'm a how about I let you all have your space? I'm, 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 I'll be over here. I'll be good. Yeah. I'll be yeah. good. I'll be good. Y'all enjoy. Enjoy. Mazel tov. <laughs> I also think that's important, too, is recognizing when. Yeah. Yeah. When, when, when yeah. to step in and when to step, step out. out. Yeah. I agree. Because there's, I, I mean, there's times where um, I'm invited into spaces and, and I get the intent and I appreciate it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But I'm like, that's not a space for me. Yeah. Yeah. And I understand that. I'm going to support you. I will share your event. I will do this for you. I will do that. Mm-hmm. But um, that at this moment in time, in the fight that you're doing or the activism you're doing or, or whatever it is that you're doing, I don't hold a space in that. Mm-hmm. And I'm okay with that because there's other things I can be doing yeah. Yeah. for you. And yeah. how can I use my gifts yeah. to right. help you do what you yeah. give what you need? When, yeah. Not necessarily to take up to space. Once and, um, or the first time. And I was like, I appreciate it, but no. And I could tell the person was, was kind of offended that I turned down their invitation to be a part of this thing. But once mm-hmm. I explained to them how I felt about it and they were like, no, that makes sense. Um, and I think they realized that they were asking me trying to, I wouldn't say push an agenda, but yeah, showing that there were, and I was like, not every, again, not every ally has to be 
present in order to, to be able to support you. Um, so yeah, yeah so I, I do think that there is a time where you can say, you know, I'm giving your space back and I'm yeah. going to support you in this way. Yeah, I agree. Okay. So more spaces, queer own spaces or queer own business. Yeah. Minority too. Yeah. yeah just mm-hmm. minorities just, in general. Yeah. That was, that was a weird thing after George Floyd and the rise of BLM there was a certain organization in town put here are all the black owned business. And it was like one thing. Yeah. And it was all like food related. Yeah. And of course me, I'm a dickhead. So I'm texting friends like, why are you not on there? Like a friend of mine who's a business consultant. I was like, why are you not on here? Why is this photographer that I'm friends with? Not on, why, what, the, what is, what kind of, what kind of white honky devil shit? Is this? <laughs> Do you know anybody? Like it was so poorly, executed that was like man y'all are... it was white people trying to show that they yep. mm-hmm. supported again they were taking a space yeah that wasn't theirs to take right yeah mm-hmm. they were one of my friends one of my very close friends who's a black man after george floyd i was like how many white people are hitting you up asking you if you're doing okay and he was like too damn many <laughs> and i was like and and then of course i'm a dick i was like how are you doing how are you holding up with the oppression of what? And he was just like, shut up, shut up, shut up. Like it was just poke up. But it's like, man, there are some, there are some times where it's like, yeah, you don't, you don't need to put your Michigas to yeah. use Yiddish on other people. Like, mm-hmm. I don't know. I don't know. But yeah, they don't, you? they don't need your, your self pity about something yeah. about that. Yeah. I mean, I, after, George Floyd um, happened there. Um, I caught myself doing that, reaching out to people I know, um, checking on them. But then I was like, mm, you know what? If if they need something, they'll let me yeah. know. Um, right now, they're processing yeah. the things that they're mm-hmm. processing. Absolutely. And what I did was, put, oh, I I'm sorry for. The people I represent and yeah. what they've done. So it now like your, it's my job your, to try yeah. to your make guilt. And was, I was like, no, that's that's yeah, that's yeah. not we, my job. And I have a relationship with these people in such a way that they know mm-hmm. <laughs> that it's not my right. place to try to make up for yeah, yeah. The, what, and you're doing what's the work. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, we we run into this a lot with all of the trans legislation that's going on. We'll get. Uh, text messages just out of the blue from somebody like thinking about you or whatever. Um, And another mom said to me one time, like, I know they mean well, but also like, maybe I wasn't thinking about it for five minutes. (laughs) Like maybe I was actually just sitting here enjoying my coffee, like doing something else. And then I got your text and it was like, Oh fuck. Yeah. That is, that is the thing that consumes my life. (laughs) So yeah. Yeah. Um, How about you and the community? I, I Although, since I, you know the executive director, you can just be like, hey, make it happen. Yeah. <laughs> I wish. If only it were that it's, easy. It's hard. I mean, I, I do wish there was more inclusive spaces. Yeah. Not mm-hmm. just for queer people, but for people of mm-hmm. color. And, um, I mean, Knoxville, it's very hard <laughs> to um, for any small business owner to to do anything but when you have that minority status on you as well being queer a woman or a a person of color it's it's even harder and and i want i would love to see more diversity in the businesses um and and knoxville i don't want to walk into every business and see some jesus quote (laughs) on the wall or on Mm. every dinnerware that's on like well i don't need a bible verse while i'm eating dinner or um i don't need something um i don't need to see one representation of what southern women are supposed to be right um i mean because the south is is made up of of a rich history of people and i want to see more representation of that i want to see more true ally businesses Mm-hmm. I don't want, there's a, and this was a discussion we had on an episode. Um, there's a lot of straight businesses that are profiting off of the queer backs. Yeah. Um, and it's double edge. Mm-hmm. I mean, because it is putting 
queer people into places they wouldn't normally get a place, but they're not getting the benefit that the other people are. So I, I would love to see more ally businesses really um, step up mm-hmm. in their um, allyship. Yeah. I mean, and I think it goes back to what Chrissy said. I don't think a lot of, I think a lot of them don't know that it's okay for them to do that or that if they do that, they're speaking on behalf of a community that they are not a part of. Um, and, um, but I think the more it happens, the easier it will be. Um, and then we, we can say we want this and we can make it happen. Yeah. Um, I mean, cause it's, it's, it's a struggle. <laughs> it really is. I mean, especially with the bride center. I mean, it's, um, I mean, there was been a few times when we thought we were going to have to shut the doors because, um, there's just not that partnership. And, and I, I would like to see communities not have to beg yeah. to thrive. Yeah. I guess that's my biggest thing is mm-hmm. I don't want for communities to have to beg to thrive. Yeah. I don't want to get on my soapbox. Uh, hey, rich old white people, you can support people other than other rich old white people yeah like yeah (laughs) but that's the uh east and north knox and my dad of there was a clear line i'm sorry a clear line of west knoxville and knoxville and he was just like west knoxville is its own damn thing he actually told so funny dad story here you get a funny dad story funny air quotes 13 couldn't find cleats in my size, so we had to go to West Town. This is back when East Town was talking. So, ah, hell. All right, let's go. So we go. We're sitting out front, and there's the main entrance, and these four or five young women walk in front. And, of course, I'm 13, so I'm like, eh, it's so pretty, you know. And Dad is just sitting there. He goes, boy, don't ever date a woman from West Knoxville. She always, she comes for money, she always have money, and she always expects you to have money. And I was like, 13? I was like, oh, shit. I was like, all right, Dad. And then when I was like 30, I was like, what do you mean I'm not going to have money? Damn it, Dad. I could maybe have money one of these days. <laughs> but it, that was his disdain towards people with affluence. Uh, in the art community, I see a lot of that. Mm-hmm. It's West Knoxville people supporting West Knoxville people. It's like there are all these other communities around here you could be helping out with your money. Mm-hmm. Maybe that's a weird side tangent, but that's that's what I think about a lot is mm-hmm. like uh cert, especially on the east side seeing certain businesses like you don't you don't need to be here. You don't need to be here. White people. Don't don't take advantage because there's an empty building. Like we should be fostering and helping and teaching young people more stuff. But good lord, I'm gonna get off my damn soapbox <laughs> on this. Sorry. <laughs> side tangent. Uh do you have any dream guests for the show? We've talked about Yeah, we've talked about that. Yeah. Um, same ones or different ones? Uh, yeah, like are we talking like how big of a dream? I dare to Reach dream. for the stars? Yeah. I want, I want, uh, I want... My brain just went completely blank. You said Brandy Carlisle. Yeah, no, but I want or the high the, women. I uh-huh. want the high women yeah. to sing her. I oh. want I want the crowd. I'm table. friendly with Amanda Shires. Do you want me? Well, tell her I want them to sing. <laughs> yes, come on, let's sing. I want her to sing. I haven't uh, got her on my show. <laughs> like, well, I just want to, I just want them to sing the. Oh, crowd. I want the crowded table as our as our opening song. Yeah. Oh, okay. I thought you meant you want to have him on his guests. Oh, of course oh, yes. I want to have him on his guests. <laughs> yeah, My goodness, she'll yes. Take, she'll just take a but pre-recorded. But let's just start with the song, yeah. and then they can figure out how fabulous we are, oh, and that they want to, you know, come on our podcast. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I'm going to circle back around. There's got, there's got, what about more? Is there anybody else other than the high women? Mm, I mean, I'll let you think yeah, on that. Yeah, no, I'm I mean, the list, I could think of a ton of people. Um... I believe my when we had this discussion, I said David Starris, mm-hmm. just because picking his brain about anything would be fascinating. 
Um, I'm not trying to do one up. I've had, uh, I have talked to him for like 20, 30 minutes. Have you had him on your show? No. After one of his shows at the Bijou's, I have a card that you may have seen that says, yes, I am tall. And it has all these funny things on it. I'm six foot seven. Yes, I played basketball, football, giraffe in school plays. I'm so glad we had this conversation. <laughs> Did and he give any me that? Time, anytime anybody makes a comment about my height, I hand them a card yeah. and walk the hell away. <laughs> I've given out 500 cards in like seven years. That's how often I get bugged about my height. That's why I bring it up so much because it's almost like the You're being what you said earlier yeah. about don't let somebody else pick on me for saying this, so I'm going to bring it up. So, uh, he, I was like, I have something. You're either going to find it very funny or you're going to think it's stupid. And as I'm pulling it out of my pocket, he's like, what is happening? Why is this? Because he was like, you can't talk to him. You can't look. You can't look at. He was like, you can't shake his hand. You can't get a photo with him. It was very like, you stay over there. Yeah, yeah. We met him so last time he came through. And I handed him the card and he was like, this is He's like, you're the last one. The microaggressions against the the tall. And he started talking at me for like 20 minutes. I was like, this is the gr- I'm becoming a David Sedaris story. Holy shit. I can't believe this. Thing. I was so excited. I was like, yeah, man. Yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. That's this great. is amazing. That's awesome. So sorry. Sorry that I keep saying I know that person. I know I've talked to that person. <laughs> oh, no. We did, too. We went and saw him. The last time we went and saw him, and I took my 11-year-old son, who's a big fan, Y'all don't judge me, but for letting him read David Sedaris. But he... um, Yeah, I was there for that one, too. He actually also gave Sawyer a few little trinkets and signed him a book. That's awesome. Yeah, it was good. Okay, so David Sedaris. Yeah, I would love to sit down and talk to him. Okay, who are you going to mention that I've met? I'm just kidding. Sorry. (laughs) I mean, the two that I would love to have on... Well, there's three. Um, I I would love to have Kelly Clarkson... Mm -hmm. um, or I swiped right on her on Tinder. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Drew Barrymore okay. um, is, if we're talking celebrities, um, I, I mean, this is very far, far, far fetched. I would love to have Michelle Obama. Oh, that would be amazing. She is a very interesting person to me, mm-hmm. and I would just love to just sit down and just not even talk about politics or anything, no. but just chit chat. Yeah. And then end with, please run. Yeah. Please, for the good of everyone in this country, please oh, run. I know you no. won't, but please run. No. no. That would not be true to her heart. No. no. Killing me, man. Yeah. <laughs> My, I say this laughing just because of how ridiculous 45 was. But my friend and I, after he got elected, right as he was running up, uh, I think, what was this, like 2018 or something? A buddy and I sitting there chain smoking cigars. Like, all right, man, we gotta get Tom Hanks involved somehow. We were trying to, we were jokingly saying, "Who are the, who are the nicest people that no one can be against?" Like Tom Hanks, and now the crazy right wingers are against Tom Hanks and calling him a pedophile, and all this shit. I'm like, mm. what? What is wrong? What is? Never mind. Sorry. Uh, I know. <laughs> That's all. Right? Oh, we we I have know. someone that doesn't like Tom Hanks. Yeah. <laughs> oh really? Oh, don't tell me. No, la 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 la. <laughs> <laughs> oh man don't tell me that I love Tom Hanks Tom. he says so, he's he's too nice not to have bodies buried in his oh, basement okay <laughs> <laughs> or or he's too nice to not to have some although kind of here yeah. re- although <laughs> you knew. although here recently he started like snapping at people a little bit like some he was walking somewhere and some like paparazzi like bumped into Rita and he turned around and grabbed the guy and started going off on the dude. So. I feel like I read something recently he's got, where he he's said got, he didn't, he was like kind of sick of being thought of as yeah. the mm-hmm. nice guy. Yeah. So he's going to go full on sleeves tatted yeah. out to the crazy. Yeah. Wait for it. All right. Just Do you have anybody people. else? I also have a celebrity question. I don't know. I'm not good at this. This is not is, my... Okay. So celebrities, I'm assuming it may be Michelle Obama. Is there anybody that you would meet that you would freak out if you ever got to meet them? Yes, and I did. Oh. <laughs> Dolly Parton. Mm-hmm. Oh, oh, yes. Jesus. I know, right? Yeah, that's... I mean, again, going okay. back, I got to take my clothes off for Dolly Parton. Exactly. Yes. <laughs> oh, is this for a burlesque show? Oh, yeah. my God. You gave it away. Sorry. Yeah, so <laughs> Spoiler we, alert. We, um, we ran um, the Smoky Mountain Burlesque Festival. Okay. Um, which was the number one festival in the U.S. for three years. 
I'm just throwing out that. But our last <laughs> year, um, we were at the Bijou, and um, her and her sisters came for their um, girls' night out. Really? Um, and we got to um, me and John, and my husband, and our business partner got to go on her tour bus and meet her That's and amazing. spend some time with her. And then she watched the show. And then after the show, we cleared the theater out and she came out and, and spent time with all the performers. Do you know who Kevin Smith is? Mm-hmm. He said he got to, he took his mom to meet her. And he's like, she smells like cotton candy and hope. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah. Or I joy mean, or it's, something. It's a, it's a smell that, I mean, it, you, you, you just can't describe yeah, mm-hmm. like I don't know what, and you can go buy her perfume, but it's not the same thing. It, I, her energy and her chemistry just changes a bit. It's just mm-hmm. like we, I was so nervous, and then when you stepped on the bus, like I just started crying. I mean, it just because we, we're not we shocked. The no. energy, she was, I'm guessing she was probably like, It's okay, like she was comforting. Oh, you. yeah, she came over, of course, and she was, she's like, she's, okay. she said, I'm, I'm, I'm just me, you know. And I, oh. it just for me, I going back to my grandmother, I remember my grandmother talking about her because she grew up at the same time that Dolly was growing up, and uh-huh. Dolly back then was a symbol of what um that a lot of young girls didn't have back then and so a lot of people live their dreams through dolly and so i just remember hearing my grandmother talk about her growing up um and then working so hard at something it was this validation and to me it was also a validation from my grandmother like it was full circle because my grandmother always talked about how she wished she had an opportunity to, we would go to Dollywood at the end of my school year. Cause that was the only time we could, we was able to go. We would go as a school to it. And my grandmother always went with us and she'd be like, I wonder if this will be the time that she's there and we get to meet her. Um, and so when I did, it was the, the same. It was That's amazing. Yeah. Like I was like, I did it for us. I got to oh, meet her and, and, um, it was, it was this. Yeah. <laughs> it was, it. it was magical. It's everything mm-hmm. you would think meeting Dolly. Well, she be. can come on the podcast. Yeah. I, that, yeah, I would, that would be dream guest. Her, yes. Yeah. The okay. ultimate dream guest. Mm-hmm. See, I always joke that there's, I don't really freak her out around celebrities. There's only two that if I ever met them, I would just walk up and go, all right, I'm going to hug you and I'm going to cry. And that's what's going to happen. Mm-hmm. You, I don't care. And it's Magic Johnson and oh. Kevin Smith. And I always joke that Magic Johnson would probably be like, bring it in. Uh-huh. And Kevin Smith would probably be like, security? Yeah. <laughs> what the yeah, I might yeah. scare Beyonce a little bit. I'd probably freak her out. Because I'd be like, <laughs> is that oh yours, God. Beyonce? Yeah. Okay. God, my sister and my stepbrother are going to see her this weekend in, Str- oh. in Atlanta. And I'm just like, okay. <laughs> she's she's one I would like to meet. Not because she's Beyonce, but because of her business mentality mm. and like, She's, she's really she's just a special heart. brain yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. She, and yeah and like i would like to just be able to have that conversation with her um about that side of it because i'm sure she gets so bombarded about being beyonce and the artist side and whatnot yeah like, you want to meet the know, human but, yeah yeah for sure same yeah. well beyonce yeah, come girl, on our podcast on. and eat dinner with us Man, and we'll treat just, you like a human i'm booking this shit out let's do this <laughs> <laughs> All right, is there anyone you would freak out if you got to meet? I think Dolly. I think Dolly's pretty high up there. I never thought about, I don't know why I never thought about Dolly before. I think it's because she's from here and it's just like, oh, that's just Dolly. Yeah. Like, she's amazing and I would shit myself if I ever met her, but it's also like, but she's Dolly. I would expect her to be Mm -hmm. comforting. Yeah, and and be like down to earth and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we, um, my, my favorite thing is leading up to her, finding out she wanted to come to the show and leading up to it. There was this whole thing about her not being able to be seen in the theater. Yeah. And we all thought it was because of security purposes. And afterwards, she told us, she said, you know, my biggest concern was taking away yeah. from you all. She said, I it, I wasn't here for me. 
She was, I was here to support those people that were on the stage because I understood what they were doing. Um, and she was like, it was never a security thing. She said, I know who I am. I know <laughs> what happens when I'm in a room. Um, she said, I didn't want it to become about me. I wanted to celebrate you all tonight. Classic That's awesome. Dolly. Mm-hmm. Candy, right. Cotton candy and hope. I, know. I, love, I love that. Cotton candy and hope. <laughs> cotton candy and hope. Well, the funny part was Kevin Smith's mom is the exact same age as Dolly. And he, the photo of them two together, he's like, what happened, mom? <laughs> <laughs> Cost a lot of money to look at this thing. Yep. Oh, God. I still remember when I was a kid because my parents would watch on TNN the Ralph Emery show, Country Tonight or whatever it was. And she, I think it was there. It was there. It was there. And she was like, all right, I've got to come clean. Now, people keep asking, real or not real? And she just kept going on and on and on. And finally ended up was like, I wear wigs. I don't know what to tell you. I was like, (laughs) oh, my God. Dolly with the comedic timing. Oh, she is. Always, Always, for sure. I have to be in the room with her wigs. Oh, yeah. Um, You've got to go into that. Was at her lake house. And Mm -hmm. you talk about pressure <laughs> you may be the one person that that one ups the the biggest celebrity because uh, the biggest celebrity i've ever met is tom cruise oh god but i'm <laughs> pretty big I, mean, I hate tom cruise oh i hate him, so, <laughs> I hate him. so the way i met he came here to promote jack reacher too yeah and i went to the thing and this is going to sound very braggy and i don't mean it to be but there was a line where he was going down, shaking hands, taking photos, signing shit. And there's a little... Hell, I just told the story on the episode with Rowan. And because uh, it always comes around this question, around this point in the podcast. Uh, there's a little kid there waiting to get a photo or something. And this dude, this autograph nut, just pushed his way to the front and pushed the kid and I reached around that dude, grabbed him by the chest, and pulled him back. Well, I happened to move my hand out there as Tom Cruise walked up. So he just saw my hand reaching and grabbing. And he was like, what the? And he looked up at me, saw what was happening. He, like, nodded or thumbs up or something. Hey, Tom Cruise. <laughs> hey, little guy. How's it going? Yeah, little man. And then Charles Barkley, I picked out a cigar for him in a cigar shop in Atlanta. And that was pretty badass. Cause have you seen his his video recently? Do you know who Charles... I hate to ask, yeah. do you know who Charles yeah. Barkley is? Uh, been, y- yes. And I know where he was about. on stage. He was on stage, and he was essentially like, if you have a problem with gay people, yeah. trans people, yeah. fuck you. Yeah. Like, yeah. him just yeah. going off, I was like, that's... I don't want to say that's huge, but it's Charles Barkley, who grew up in Alabama and played in sports his whole life, for him mm-hmm. to, I don't know, step up. I good for him yeah. i guess i don't i live i lived in nashville when i went to school and I, I worked for um a furniture store there and so i there was several celebrities that would come in the store um and so i don't want to say i got desensitized but um some of them were nice and some of them were, were not yeah. so nice yeah. I've gotten, because I go to a lot of shows, I've gotten to meet a lot of people afterwards. And yeah, the list of people who have been nice, the list of people who are not very famous, who are not very nice, it's like, mm, you shouldn't have this arrogance. No, no. I had to meet Taylor Swift when she first Did was you? coming out. Yeah. Was she nice? She was. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Her and, and her designer, I, I guess it was when she first started making money, um, came in to look at furniture by furniture and she was sweet but back then she wasn't what she wasn't what she is yeah, today yeah so. okay well you just did it you unlocked it i've not met taylor swift but my friend courtney taylor swift and dolly Parton. is a is a hardcore ta- like the most aggressive taylor swift fan i've ever met and she was doing these listening parties at her houses across the globe and courtney got invited to go and is sitting there on the couch and Taylor Swift comes and sits next to her and gives her a cookie she just baked. Oh, oh yeah. Wow. I, and she she started she was like, You're Courtney and you she had read like Courtney's Tumblr she, I, and was responding and she was, would I guess would be another one mm-hmm. that I You want to have on the podcast. To yeah. Have on the podcast, yeah. but also to talk with. Mm-hmm. Especially after oh, this God. tour she's on. 
Um, one, her giving out $55 million to her yeah. employees her because she recognized how hard they were working. But also knowing that she gave away that much more to charities in every city that she did a tour on. Mm -hmm. Did she? Oh, I didn't yeah, know that. Because her putting on that tour obviously created a lot of yeah, thing. Revenue, and so sure. she wanted to give back to those. Um, and so there are food banks in the areas that she did um, um, tours in got donations. Um, and that would feed the equivalent to 500,000 families a month for 10 years. Damn. Wow. Yeah. Well, that's isn't that the thing about Dolly? It's like she's could have been a billionaire yeah, a, few, so a bunch away. of different times, but she's given up given away so much that she's not there. Mm -hmm. That's right. amazing. You know that's what? Me. I'm never going to make any money. <laughs> You're I know. Give it all I know. Away. <laughs> yes, Chrissy. You're on my pocket. I get Dolly first. No, just <laughs> I want to. You, <laughs> we could call her. <laughs> Oh my God! Yeah, somebody. There was one point where a group of us were sitting around. It's like, who's the most famous person in your phone? And I was like, mine is so lame. That wait, is, yeah, he's he's not anymore. There was a guy who used to perform at Dollywood named James Rogers that had his own theater in Pigeon Forge, and I did work for him when I was worked at the print shop, and I had his phone number. I would call him while he was out on the road or something. I was like, this is, I grew up going and seeing this dude perform. And now I got his phone, his phone number. This is weird. It's like, but he's not even that famous. <laughs> like he's I know a, who James Rogers is. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> fly, let the <laughs> fly eagles fly yeah. or whatever. Yeah. Let the eagles fly. Uh, I don't know. I don't either. You, you're I good. grow up here. You're good. No. Well, the other, I've got two comedians in my podcast or in my phone that are, Still not that famous, but uh, are there any thoughts to ever doing a live episode, like with an audience? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Dustin wants to do it really, really bad. Yeah. But ours would look different because we are a dinner-centric podcast. My idea is to take over a restaurant, and yeah. so we invite people to come to dinner, and we're, we do a live um, recording there. While people are having dinner, that have come to to watch us do the yeah recording without it looking like the Last Supper. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it would be okay if it looked like the Last Supper. Yeah, <laughs> I'm trying to think like the old before they refurb Patrick Sullivan's. You know, they had that second level that overlooked. I was like, man, that would actually be kind of cool if y'all were sitting on the lower <laughs> level. I got there too. Yeah. <laughs> You got what? Oh, naked you got naked there. there. It, uh, it used to be. It's the, thir a, the third floor. Uh -huh. Oh, yeah. I've been to a lot of concerts up there. Um, the Patrick Sullivan's back in the heyday, or when it was first started, was a, a brothel. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's mm. why when you drove, the windows up top had silhouettes of women yeah. because that was. Yeah. In the Bijou <clears throat> Theater. Bijou Theater used to be a Oh, that's and right. It used to be a porn house, too. Yeah. And it oh. was a brothel and a porn house when a church owned it. Really? I don't nice. I don't think I knew that about the church part. Yeah. Hmm. If you go up to the top Rich floor, there history. is a, when you come up the staircase, there is a window. That's where the the man with the gun would sit watching security when the women would bring up their um, guests. <laughs> Love it. Uh, do you all set goals or a checklist for the podcast? <laughs> now I'm getting into the technical nerd shit. Uh, we talk about a lot we, of we, stuff. <laughs> we, we set a goal to hit 10 episodes uh -huh. and we met it. Yeah. Okay. I would also say, though, that we, the three, the three of us, you are more of a planner than we are, but are more, we've always wanted it to feel kind of, um, Reform. Yeah. 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 But we are also realizing as we go that having some, a little bit of structure is not a bad. Yeah, there's a happy not medium, a, for sure. That's mm -hmm. why I have questions now. Because I started interviewing people that I didn't know. I was like, I can't bullshit with these people yeah. like I do yeah. friends. Yeah. So. yeah. So far, we haven't had any trouble with like keeping the conversation going at all. No, no. It's not really about that. 
it's almost more like reining it in. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You gotta figure out how to rein it in a little bit. Make better. it, yeah. Stay on topic. Yeah. Focus. Yeah. Focus, mm-hmm. Leroy, yeah. focus. Uh, do you know what you'd like to do with it in the next 10 years? Oh, we're just trying to do 10 episodes. I know. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, God, 10 <laughs> years from now. I can't I, I, in the next 10 years, I, I would love for us to do traveling shows where yeah. we hosted these dinners um, that I want to say are conferences, but are kind of town hallish where we are able to come in and mediate these conversations in communities through. Oh shit. I like that. I know that would through, be cool. Through dinner. Yeah. Oh man. There, there used to be a Everybody design to conference. Manifest in here, girl. <laughs> oh my God. Manifest. Put on your board. Uh, there was a, it's very interesting. There's a design conference I used to go to in Cleveland, Ohio called Weapons of Mass Creation Festival. And there was one year where the two people who ran it were like, there's too many white people, white dudes that get up and talk. Let's make it a little bit more diverse. And they actually had a panel that was, uh, LGBT. What is the proper term? Is it LGBTQ plus? LGBTQIA plus. Holy crap. Or <laughs> as we're trying to you need to say the queer community. Mm-hmm. Okay. It, it's all encompassing mm-hmm. of I jokingly would refer to it the alphabet mafia to a friend of mine. <laughs> but okay. Uh they wanted an array and it was fascinating hearing like they had eight panelists from an older black woman who was preferred to be called a lesbian. Uh, a younger woman who just preferred the term queer transport. Like it was the, a full array and it was mm-hmm. fascinating hearing like the older black woman was like, I don't like that word, the term queer. She's like, cause I've had it hurled at me too. Mm-hmm. She's 50 years old or something. She's like, I've had that hurled at me too much. I don't, I don't truck with that. And then the younger woman was like, I don't like that term. And, I, and there was part of me in the back that will go, can stop fighting. Let's stop. <laughs> Let's all we, get on the same path. We talk here. a little bit about that on the episode mm-hmm. that comes out tomorrow. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 But uh, the somebody much smarter, not to get super political, somebody much smarter than I said, the left falls in love, the right falls in line, and I was like, okay, now how do we fix that? <laughs> how do we get? And I, I drew out on a piece of paper. I was like, man, I do, I want to stop being so fractured and arguing with one another on the mm-hmm. left because the right just show up and vote and don't care if it's if marjorie taylor green keeps getting elected how the fuck that keeps happening sorry sorry i will i will <laughs> I'll, I'll circle it up i'll circle it up. <laughs> uh, yeah. that's where i get frustrated i was like let's all we're home let's all let's move forward yeah let's go let's go we gotta listen to each other yep. yeah. yeah we really do mm-hmm uh, and here's the big final heavy duty question. If you could talk to the 14 year old versions of yourselves, what would you tell them? Oh. Mm. Dust's going to cry. I know. <laughs> <laughs> you want to go first? You want to wait? I, I can go first. Yeah. Um, 14. I would tell my 14 year old self that. It's not as big as you think it is. Mm-hmm. Um, that there are more people who love and support you than you think. Um, they just show it in different ways. Um, and that you'll learn to navigate through that to find your true self. Yeah, I'd probably remind myself I'm, or tell myself that I'm more powerful than I think I am. I can. Why are you still shit out of my head? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> it's at manifest and it's at I mind. Know. Well, we have this weird. Yeah, thing. yeah we do. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That quiet, insecure girl that didn't like to stand up and talk in front of people. One that's reading the books in the corner. Re- mm-hmm. Yep. That I had much more power and more to say and more. Mm-hmm. more meaning uh, I, uh, yeah just wish I would have been a little louder I would say know 
that you are worthy of the love and that you are powerful and use that and follow that gut because it's always right. One, the thing I came up with, I only came up with recently was, and this is a pandemic thing. I was like, uh, you, you don't have to be tough all the time. You can cry. It's okay to cry. Mm-hmm. It's like that was something I didn't really kind of jump into until I was, uh, and I'll tell a funny, funny, maybe funny. I don't know if it's funny. I was in a room full of guys, and one of the guys got asked, he's like, what would you do this weekend? He's like, I went and got a pedicure with my daughter. And the main guy was like, ugh, I'm going to revoke your man card. And then he's, he's like, anybody else in here had a pedicure? I was like, I've had a bunch. And he's like, ugh, got to take your man card. It's like, how more manly do I need to be? Please come over here and tell me how manly I need to be. The getting a pedicure is is not manly enough. You're out of your fucking mind. It's adorable. I start calling him adorable. And he did not like that because <laughs> I can confront people. I'm like, that's adorable. That's so cute. Here, come on. Let me, let me pinch your little cheek there, buddy. <laughs> people are crazy. I think it's funny because it's like that dude. I always think that dude has to go home and think about what because nobody's ever pushed back on him oh, that's not manly that's not tough fuck off <laughs> okay that's not funny i wanted to end on a happy joy. <laughs> <laughs> happy joy it's funny it's funny to me because i just love correcting funny, people but I'm like, you know i'm uh, over here like he deserves love too uh, <laughs> he's an asshole but yeah. nobody loved him right <laughs> Chris, he's an asshole but nobody loved him <laughs> God, uh, yeah, I can't. Okay, well, there you go. That's a good way to end it. He's an asshole, but he deserves one too. No, I, more merch idea. Yeah, I know. I know. Idea. It's that okay needs to be on a fanny pack. It it's needs to be on a fanny pack. All right. Well, thank you all for being on. Thank you. Yeah, for thanks for having us. us.